All right, look, it's a fact. Poor gut health will destroy your ability to build muscle, burn body fat, or even feel good. Gut health has been connected to everything. If you're trying to get fit and healthy, you need to look at your gut. It controls quite a bit. It's connected to quite a bit. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, there's lots of things you can do, but one of the most important is to make sure you maintain good gut bacteria. Good gut bacteria helps offset other bacteria and other funguses. If good bacteria is down, the bad stuff takes over. It's really all about balance. This is where a very good probiotic can make a massive difference. In fact, studies show a good probiotic can contribute to increased recovery, better skin, better mood, uh, all kinds of amazing things, less anxiety. It's quite remarkable. So a good probiotic, this is a very inexpensive investment a lot of you should probably be making. This was never a conversation like 10 years ago yeah. in our space. Yeah. Nobody talked about gut health. I remember distinctly when this was something that I started to pay attention to, uh, partly because I had <laughs> health issues with poor gut health. But really it started before that because I had a um, somebody who was really well-versed in functional medicine who worked in my wellness studio. And she would always talk about gut health uh, with her clients. And I remember kind of being a meathead trainer at the time. So it kind of went in, went in here out the other. But I would see her clients get these great results and they'd come back and report great results. And you know, if you're always trying to help your clients, eventually you pay attention. So I would talk to her about it and she would explain to me how the, the gut can become hyperpermeable. Um, you know, food particles or proteins can get into your bloodstream, can cause immune reactions, how poor gut health can result in cravings and sleep issues, how the majority of some of these uh, feel good horm uh, chemicals like serotonin are produced in the gut and so on. And I, when I heard her say this, I was like, this, is that real? And then I'd look it up. I'm like, holy cow, this is a legit thing. And this was back when probiotics were really only used by people who were like kind of that wellness crunchy, yeah. you know, side. Didn't wear shoes. Yeah. And I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I remember thinking, wow, this is like a missed opportunity with the like muscle building athletic performance side. Um, and look, I've, I've seen tremendous differences when my gut health is good versus bad. It's for me personally, and I can go, I can swing pretty, pretty extreme. It's like eight pounds of lean body mass for me. It's about 3% body fat. So 3% yeah. body fat, eight pounds of lean body mass. If it's good or bad, that's how big of a difference it yeah. can make. Meanwhile, we're pounding all the protein shakes, all like the caffeine ephedra drinks, like yeah. all these things. And then, you know, medicating every now and then with Pepto and Tums yes. and, and Alka-Seltzer. And like, there's this weird uh, disassociation completely with like these symptoms that you have. And then it's like, oh, well, these over-the-counter things will help to kind of absolve the the symptoms. But then it's like, it just keeps perpetuating the problem. You have no idea. Like this is yes. an under underlying thing here. So it's funny that we have a seed commercial today because yesterday night I actually didn't use my seed when I always talk about how, uh, you know, if there's like a, a Friday cheat meal type of deal that Katrina and I will have, it's like we get, have burgers. What I mm -hmm. thought it wasn't Friday it was Sunday, Mother's Day. I asked her, what do you want to have tonight? She goes, oh, let's have burgers. I said, okay, cool. We'll have burgers tonight. I normally am good about taking my seed before I do that. I didn't. You know what tripped me out? What I actually noticed more than anything, I actually was like that night I went to bed okay. And I think a lot of that had to do with I was had an empty stomach. And so I didn't overdo it too bad. But what I noticed in the morning, I couldn't get my aura ring off. Mm, oh, you got sw swelling. swelling. Yeah, wow. I've never. So I don't wear rings. And so I guess I've never really noticed something like that before. And, but I went to go to, because I charge it when I'm in the shower. So I go to pull off. I couldn't get, I couldn't get it off. And when we first got them just like a couple weeks ago. It was sized perfectly. It's, yeah, so, and a little loose. And it, it was like so hard to pull it off. And I'm like, oh my God, I must be super. And then I looked at myself in the reflection. I, I can see it total on my body, but I had never noticed how much even yeah. water retention I get in my fingers and stuff like from something like that. Yeah, that's a sign yeah. of um, inflammation, some kind of low <clears throat> stiffness, right? That's another one. Irritability um, would be another sign of, uh, of that. But, you know, when you look at the gut, there's this, uh, there's always a war going on in your gut. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I know experts are probably rolling their eyes, but it's the best explanation I have. And you want to think that there's a balance of bacteria in there. And if one drops too much, what it does is it creates an opportunity for other bacteria, opportunist bacteria to take over. There are certain bacteria that we know that are good at maintaining balance. Those are the ones that you find in seed. These ones keep all the other stuff in check. So when you supplement this on a regular basis, 
let's say your gut is a little off, which most of us are. Just It's just a fact. Modern life is not conducive to a great healthy gut all the time. We're, we're constantly exposed to environmental toxins, plastics, and chemicals. Just the stuff you put on your skin, your hair, you, you breathe. That starts to break down the lining of the gut. We'll get to that in just a second. But then also the foods that we eat. We eat foods that are uh, heavily processed. There's chemicals in the foods as well. Not necessarily bad, but when you start to compile the stuff, you start to kind of wear away the, the, the barrier that the gut provides. And you start to create a little inflammation. And then the bad bacteria starts to take over a little bit. Well, what C does is it's like you're, you're, you're populating your gut with good soldiers constantly. Now, if you do this once you'll get a little bit of a benefit, but then those good soldiers go away. This is why you take it on a regular basis. So you're populating your gut with these good bacteria that keep the bad bacteria in check and create balance. That balance allows your body to produce the right amount of catecholamines or serotonin. It helps reduce inflammation. And then it prevents the breakdown of the gut wall. So the gut wall, you have what's called a mucosa lining. If that mucosa lining breaks down, then the, 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 the gut is basically exposed to the acids that are in there and the types of things that you eat, when that inflammation happens, the, the the lining itself, the cells of the lining start to inflame and you start to create these little gaps. This is what makes it permeable, right? This is this is leaky gut syndrome. So if you if you if you look at the gut, it's this very intelligent, again for lack of a better term, part of our bodies that knows when to let things in and when not to let things in. So it's not like you take you eat a food and it all gets absorbed in one part of your gut. There are parts of your gut that take the protein, the carbohydrates, the fats. There's vitamins and minerals that get that get taken out at particular times. So it's this really, you know, kind of smart system that uh, allows things in when it's supposed to and doesn't allow things when it's not supposed to. Well, if that breaks down, things get through when they're not supposed to. You get a immune response, low level, and that causes lots of problems. Over time, this can cause big issues where now I have such a strong immune response to this food that I eat all the time because I've had this poor gut health that I used to be able to eat this food, now mm -hmm. I can't. And it's like, why all of a sudden I ate this and now I can't? What is going on? Yeah, something that provides you nutrients and sustenance now is like a foreign invader. Yes. Yeah, it's something that, and two, isn't that the case if like you're super stressed and inflamed yep. and then you're eating? So to, to be able to kind of calm your heart rate down and, um, you know, make sure you're in that parasympathetic state is, is key as well. Absolutely. So all of these things, um, can cause issues and modern life is not conducive to uh, good gut health. So it becomes more important to consume, um, you know, healthy probiotics and then do other things to kind of maintain uh, good gut health. Because if you don't, um, your hormones will be thrown. I mean, literally there's not a single system in your body that doesn't get positively or negatively especially negatively affected uh, by gut health. Everything that you can think of, I mean, God, they do stu they did studies on anxiety and uh, depression. Hmm. Literally, people with anxiety, low-level depression, <clears throat> they supplement with beneficial bacteria, and we see enough of a measure to where it's significant enough to report Well, it's on. known as the second brain, right? I mean, this, that's... Yeah. So, you know, when we first started the podcast, you actually used to... We used to talk about this a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and now, we obviously, we bring it up when there's a commercial for seed. We talk more about it again. But we used to talk about it a lot. What do you think is like the 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 next big breakthrough waiting to happen in that science? Because it is evolving, yeah. and we're still learning, and there's still question around it. There's still a lot of skeptical people that don't even think it matters that much. Like, where where are we at with it currently now? And what do you foresee as like the next big breakthrough when it comes? So to they it? they've come a long way. So probiotics have come a long long way. Where now, for example, you have a company like Seed. That has that they they have created a capsule that releases the beneficial bacteria where it's supposed to. So that's big and it's stable at room temperature. That's huge. It used to be the only yeah, probiotics that had any had live bacteria. Fridge. You had to go get refrigerated. Uh, everything else was kind of a waste uh, type of deal. So that was really big. I think the next level um, is going to involve uh, something more specific and tailored to the individual. Um, that'll be a huge. Um, breakthrough. That'll be massive in terms of what what it could do. But like mm. treating SIBO, do you know how far we've come? Yeah. It used to be, first of all, SIBO wasn't even acknowledged. So this is small intestinal bacterial over overgrowth. Then it was treated with antibiotics, mm -hmm. which was better than nothing, but that's got its own problems. And then we had studies to show that herbal micro, uh, antimicrobials were as effective in the short term, but, but more effective long term because they don't just wipe everything out. So now people with SIBO 
they have the option, pharmaceutical or herbals mm-hmm. that you can get over the counter that work extremely well. So that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I would imagine it would be around more of the testing so you could get that kind of individualization. Uh, so that way too, I wonder, I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of different strains out there that, you know, if they could they hand select maybe one that was more beneficial for you in terms of what to combat whatever bacteria yeah. that was a problem. I will say this, um, I don't want to um, speak outside of my lane here, but the, the peptide space is really interesting with this. Mm-hmm. So BPC-157, BP stands, stands for body protective compound. This is a peptide that <clears throat> Uh, accelerates healing, wound healing, recovery. It's been shown to uh, accelerate the mucosal line, uh, lining, healing of the gut, reduce gut inflammation. Athletes have been using it specifically for joint issues. So they'll, they'll inject it literally into the joint and see healing. It's pretty remarkable stuff. It's one of the most studied or well-known uh, um, peptides that's out there. If you take it orally, you can actually take it orally and then it help, it works on the gut. Yeah. There's another peptide called KPV. KPV has been shown to have uh, phenomenal results on the gut as well. Anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and also helping to build um, the gut mucosa lining. The company we work with at mphormones.com is one of the first companies I know of, and I've been using this only now for a few days, so I can't really remark uh, in terms of its effectiveness yet. I got to take it for at least a few weeks, I would say. They make a capsule that's got KPV and, and uh, KPV and BPC. Together. Together. And it's specifically for oh, gut I health. Know that. Hell yeah. I'm going to take that. It is. And, and then I texted you because yeah. KPV specifically has been shown to be help with psoriasis. Now, would I be better off taking a uh, a bigger dose of just KPV or the blended, you think? I think probably topical. I think you could use KPV topically. So you might be able to actually rub it on psoriasis. Really? Yeah. So I would ask the people we work with if they have that. Now, orally, you do get a systemic effect. Yeah. But I'm, I would assume, this is just my assumption, that the topical would be more uh, effective specifically for psoriasis. Hmm. But if you take it orally, same thing with BPC. Like I could, you can inject it into an injury and then it'll heal it faster. But there's a systemic effect if you take it orally. Yeah. So I don't know. But this the oral capsule one is more for overall healing, <clears throat> inflammation, and then gut health in particular. So I just started that. I'll let everybody know. Yeah, that'll be good. But it's the first company I know that has combined the two, made in a pharmacy, you know, pharmaceutical um, lab or whatever. So it's not, you know, research chemical or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that's supposed to be pretty good. If this, if this is it, I mean, this could be massive, because one of the challenges with treating gut health is, or working on poor gut health, is once you, let's say you have SIBO, you got the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and let's say you treat it, you kill it, <clears throat> you're still left with an inflamed, damaged gut. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I feel better. Uh uh-uh. uh. You, now you got to go through the process of healing. You can't just go and eat a bunch of stuff yeah, you anymore. You still have to be pre restrictive with your diet for a while. Yeah. Because you got to let it heal. And if you don't, what will end up happening is you'll get SIBO again, which is what we see. It's like the reoccurrence rate of SIBO is like 70%. Yeah. So imagine this that these peptides, more research comes out. There's a lot of anecdote right now. I've, I've talked to tons of people and like this is a game changer. But imagine this you do your SIBO protocol, then you follow it up with a peptide to accelerate the healing so you don't get that reoccurring, you know, those reoccurring issues. So smart. Yeah. That would be cool. I don't know. I'll let you guys know uh, how it You works already out. have it then. I have it. This is day three. So I know I have the BBC coming, but it was the injectable kind for my quad. That's what I wanted to use. More specific. Yeah, more specific. Yeah, that, but now I want to I would that. ask them for if they have topical KPV for psoriasis to see if you could do that. Yeah, that's Because I read a bunch, because obviously I'm going to go read whatever I'm going to take, right? And, um, the the so you were reading it for that, and then you came across the psoriasis thing. Is that how yeah? That first, happened? I was like KPV for gut health, BPC for gut health, and then I was going. And then, so what I'll do typically is I'll look up studies. I'll look up what the you know what the medical community says. Then I'll go in forums because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I want to hear what people are actually experiencing. Yeah. And the thing that kept sticking out on KPV was psoriasis. Interesting. And people were like, this is like the best thing I've ever used. Wow. For, for psoriasis. Yeah, no, I'll try it. So I'm, I'd be excited to see how you yeah, yeah, no, respond I'll, to something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'll try it for sure. All right, today's giveaway, the RGB bundle. You can win that for free. Yes, you can, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all those things and you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Look, we're also running a sale this month. Maps Prime is half off, Maps Prime Pro is half off, and the bundle that's discounted, you could take an additional 50% off. 
If you're interested in any of those, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, I got to tell the audience, uh, I mean, just full, like 100%, I'm going to admit this right now. Adam, I apologize. I'm going to have to include you in this. <laughs> oh, Justin <great>. is... <laughs> Easily, easily twice as manly as we are. <laughs> what are you talking about, like, dude? like just, just, I'm so glad it was just us in the room when uh, it happened. We audience had, already knows this. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's okay. We had a random lizard in the studio. A big big lizard. ass lizard. We took bro. a video and everything. I mean, yeah, it was it was a good one. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, you better get the uh, container for it. Justin's just gonna grab one hand. You guys gonna get We're under attack! The lizard people are definitely. Get him? Yeah. This guy's not biting. Holy shit! Damn, another it's big suck. He's gonna shit, probably, hey. too. Hey, throw him in there and make him fight, dude. Yeah, I yeah, see him getting ready to Throw him in there. That's actually probably the. Long tail. That's probably the biggest lizard I've ever seen. I've seen iguanas, right? That are obviously. You mean like natural here in San Francisco? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a lizard that big running around, especially in the city. Hello, yeah. weird. He's Hello been, weird. He's been eating everything, it looks like. Uh, growing his tail super long. And uh, yeah, so it was just like cornered in this part of the studio. Well, you back didn't see here. what happened before. Yeah, yeah. So you guys tell me you dress it up. Yeah, because we it was, so it, was, ah! it was right under the TV. <laughs> we were right here. Ah! No, I'm getting my hair cut by Vicky. <laughs> that's not what happened. What got, what's happening? No, Adam's like, holy shit, that's a big ass lizard. Yeah. I look and, and Doug's like, oh, and all of us were like, oh my God, right? So we're like, we run out of the <laughs> the studio. Waiting for it to catch itself. To find something, right? To, to throw on top of it, right? So we're like, none of us are going <laughs> to get a box. It. Yeah. What are we going to do? And I'm standing in here to keep watch, like make sure it doesn't yeah. try to escape. Yeah. Then it starts to run away. Doug gets a big plastic box and it goes under some shit. And now we're trying to look for it with a flashlight. We're using our foot, you know, <laughs> trying to tap it out. Justin uh, walks in and he's just with his hand. He just <laughs> shit he, bit him though, dude. And he grabbed it. He's biting oh, yeah, his hand. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. ah, he was, that hurts. He's biting my my thumb pretty good, but you know they dude, they're not poisonous. Like that's all I really care. Yeah, yeah if yeah. they're poisonous, I'm not fucking with yeah, it, dude. Yeah. But what if you had like a weird infection or something? What if you get like some? You could suck it out. I don't dude. really think about that. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll <laughs> stick it in your mouth and you can help me out. Dude. <laughs> it's like your own poison, <laughs> I got, out, bro. I got <laughs> you, bro. You're, you know, we have employees. We'll make some things like that. Yeah, Andrew, get over here. It was literally while he's holding. Friend. Why he's holding it's like chewing on Justin's thumb the whole time. <laughs> well, Andrew was saying that the boys had seen it in here for a while now, huh? Is the guys that had seen it? <clears throat> yeah, that was the first I heard of it too. They said they saw it like last week. Yeah, uh, I didn't even know. I didn't even know anyone had seen it in here. We're just I'm like, yeah. that was so random to see something. It's just funny because that's like a pastime event, like at my house, you know, with my kids and stuff. And we'll go to this rock pile that's like outside and and uh try and corner like there's a good, I don't know, maybe like 10 or so that just live under this like pile of rocks and we're just out there just you know make hours of it just like catching these things so that's that's Are my you, wheelhouse what's, okay let me ask you this uh what if it was a tarantula then would you, what would you oh do? i was dude yeah now i'm like you guys oh, okay like, see that's okay. so funny i'm less worried, throwing about, worried about tarantulas I, we used to wait a minute you yeah. wouldn't grab a tarantula with your hand bro i used to let them crawl on me no, no hold on a second all they a do all they do is shoot their little hairs at you they don't even do oh, it. Yeah, what? Yeah, it's nothing. They go like this. They got so when they, get, when they get mad, when they get mad, their ass goes up in the air and they drop down. That's when you know they're gonna they're gonna attack. And they they shoot they shoot little tiny hairs yeah. at you. It's Hold on a second. That. If Let there's a tarantula in here yeah. right now, you just grab it with your hand. Yeah. Swear to God. Yeah, we grew up with them, dude. All over. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I, I'm last. They weren't like they were chewing open. it out. At least. You yeah, know, they're like, not. They're, I, I, you know what I don't like? I would grab smaller spiders, it? like little, like black widows oh. or like little well, yeah, spiders. Black widow. Oh, right. But a big tra I, The the bigger Kill. the thing is, the less I am about it. Like I know I, you lumped me into your your lizard thing. Oh, there, I know I what makes you a pussy. <laughs> you don't like scary movies. Yes, that's there you right. go. I'm trying to feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You brought me in on that. I'm like, dude, we I'm like, to, there's got to be something I can bro, do. We used, to, we used to kill uh, rattlesnakes, dude. I, oh, I wow. don't do not know what my parents were doing. We're in fifth, sixth grade. Yeah, we With were the shovel. We used to go, no, we actually, yeah, when we go fishing out of Don Pedro, they're all over out there and you'd come across them all the time. And we'd first, we'd injure them with a, with a boulder, right? So when we'd hear them and get them in an area and you'd injure them with that. And then the other guy would take his fishing pole and then try and pin its neck or head down. The other guy cut it, cut its head off. Wow. Mm -hmm. We used to do that as kids all wow. the time. You see them all the time though, though, over there. It's like a normal occurrence. And in uh, October, 
it's a tarantula season and so they're everywhere i mean we you they'd come in the house you'd give them you'd see them in the pool in the pool like you'd when i used to live them. off santa Teresa, you get them like uh crawling yeah. across the street all the yeah. time our yeah. backyard yeah. and all that so it was like yeah it was always weird to i see. wouldn't even let I october is uh, maybe look it up for me october is like breeding season or something but like in october yeah, up there like bro i wouldn't even i wouldn't even let aurelius play in the sand pit the other day because there was some ants in there <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, buddy. He's all crying. I'm like, there's ants in there. We got to get rid of the ants. I just taught Max, I just taught Max the difference spiders. between red and black ants, which one, like, he's like, so he knows, like, red red ones are bad. You. Yeah. He calls every, like, if, if you're evil, but like, so it's. He says uh, evil? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, How they, cute. They're, if, they're, if they're good, they're happy. Or they're bad guys, so it's either the, everything. Everything is either either ha like so. If he sees like a a zombie or something that's like scary, he'll always ask me. We were watching Peter Pan last night, and the pirates are they happy pirates or are they bad pirates? So that's his <laughs> happy. If they're happy, they're good. You know, that's his his definition of what what's good. Oh, what is it, Doug? Yeah, September, so September October. October. Uh, Does it say it why? What what they're? Uh, I thought maybe because they're uh, breeding they're, or something around that time. Yeah, I found that you're, you're right. Spiders tend to mate during the fall months, and they're more noticeable in the fall because they had all summer to grow. Now read up on the thing that Creepy. I said about how they shoot hairs at you too. Okay, I have yeah. heard of that. Did that hurt? Does that hurt? Or is no, 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 no. Yeah. I don't think you really feel it. Do you even see it? And they don't. Uh, no, they don't. It's they're they don't. They're like super docile, dude. You could let them. They don't attack. They don't try and bite you. They don't do nothing like that. That's what I'm saying. Like a little yeah. tiny spider, I would freak way more out. They over. had those of those little like so. Uh, Everett had. I mean, we had one of those like lizard guys, like uh, like a reptile party. You know, like how they bring like oh, snakes yeah. and things for kids to put. And so yeah, and they brought like a um, a tarantula, and it just would crawl on them. And wow. so Adam's Pretty right again. <laughs> so they eject bristles from their abdomens. Yeah. So they, they go like this. They, they tilt yeah. up like this. Sounds kind of lame, though. It's not very you know, powerful. It's not at all. Like, I don't, so I don't remember even ever feeling it. So. <laughs> Ew. <Yeah. laughs> That'd be effective for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't dude. get near uh, me. Throw my pews that's, on you. That's your superpower. Ah. Like, dude. I've always thought it was interesting that people that like are, are like, uh, they don't bother me, whatever, but like so into it that you'd want it as a pet. I would never what want hell? like a, a, a that's so weird. Yeah. Tranche, that's, a spider for a pet. It's creepy. I told you guys about the guy that I used to live with when I was in college had like snakes like big pythons and yeah yeah like he had a, like a Dude. bunch of them in his room and uh one of them would always get out and that, that was the one of course that like slithered across the hall and made its way into my bed uh, when I got home late at dude, night, I had a bite. Really? Oh. Dude, had, bit my a, arm. And what? Like I, yeah. I went in, it bit my arm. It was like, it, the creepiest thing about snakes when they bite you, they're like wriggling with it. And then, oh, oh that's weird. Choked it out. I was going to kill it. And he runs, don't kill my snake, dude. Don't yeah. kill my snake. What'd you do? Uh, it was just like, threw him. <laughs> yeah. Threw a snake he was, to the He was mad at you me. Seen those like, prank, you ever seen those pranks where someone has like a fake snake, but they have a wire and they hook it to their friend's like back oh, pocket? Yeah. And then while they're running, the snakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I uh, my, I had a buddy who I won't. Let me see. Okay, it was a buddy. I'm not gonna say too much because don't know. <laughs> sure, decide yourself. Who uh, was started? He's like went on a date with this girl, and she was kind of goth, you know. He's like, I don't know, man. She's kind of weird, you know, but she's hot, you know, or whatever. And he's yeah. like, should I go out with him? Like, yeah, dude. You, should, you know, might be good. Who knows? Whatever. Goes back to her place. <laughs> goes back to her might place, dude. And she had tanks of spiders and snakes oh, in her room no yeah dude no in her room bro no. just tons of them yeah so anyway that, yeah, that, that date ended that, <laughs> that, would, that would weird me out well because he don't like spiders either the yeah, guy i'm talking bro, about hates spiders he trying to sleep in that place hell oh no. hell no <laughs> yeah jessica's deathly deathly afraid of spiders where, oh, where yeah. were we? Where yeah, were we Katrina in? is Katrina. I was as a kid. I had to work through that, man. That <clears throat> spiders, was... which sucks for me because I don't like those things either. And so, but if one, now you got to be the tough. Oh one. yeah, Same yeah, here. yeah. No, yeah. she's like I. I told you about the time she made me stay outside because I it was a big ass spider, kill. and I tried to kill it and it fell. It was in the patio, <laughs> and, and it was big and got away. She, no, I hear the the freaking sliding glass door slam behind me, and I turn around. <laughs> she locks you out. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, you can't come in until you find it. She for sure locked it, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's at night. Yeah, no, Katrina's done this before, where I like I hit it. And then it comes off the wall, and then it goes, and then I gotta find it before uh, she'll go to bed. You ever She's lie? Like, yeah, I yeah. found it. I flushed it out the toilet. <laughs> She's let me see. Yeah. I don't believe you. You ever have one jump on you, dude? Oh my god! That was oh my god! I was like, I was uh, at the wood pile, and I was like uh, loading wood for inside at my parents' house, and I uncovered this log, and there was this huge wolf spider. And it was like, and I was like, what is this? And I like kind of <laughs> pick face. it up and it jumped, literally jumped on like your head, on my head. And I smacked it off. And I have like 
I had like PTSD about it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the worst case scenario, you know, between that and then if you walk through a spider web oh, and yeah. the spider's on it. Oh, oh yeah. no. Which has happened to me too. So that's happened to me. That happened to me. They told you the dairy because you, I'd go turn the lights on. Hell like, of spiders in there. Yeah. Room. And they would overnight, you know, create a web and then you walk through it oh, and then feel hey, it. Whoa. Hey, how, how, that must be the funniest thing in the world from an outsider. Because you, you don't see a spider web. That's you just, my favorite. Yeah. You, you see, see a dude walking and just losing his shit. Dude, there has to be a compilation video of people just like walking through spirals. Like, ah, yeah, just going crazy. I would love that. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to watch that. Anyway, bro. hey, speaking of, of, of reptiles and weird shit, did you guys know there's a specific way, this is a random fact, Justin will appreciate this, if an alligator or crocodile, maybe crocodile, if it's chasing you on ground, first of all, it's faster than you in a short sprint. Did you know that? It'll catch With you. With stumpy little legs? It'll catch you in a short sprint, like a like a 20-foot sprint. You're Is dead. Because it, it, it like really? jostles. Hella fast. I looked it up. It's tail Hella and kind of whips it forward. But there is a way to get away hmm. if it's chasing you and you're I, trying to get away. I'd say zigzag. That's exactly right. Yeah. If you zigzag, it can't turn very it's well. like when somebody's shooting at you. You probably want to zigzag. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of experience. It's a pretty good you don't strategy. You want to run straight. It. You just want to angle it. Yeah. Like, Extreme, I would actually, yeah. well, that's probably the, the, the that universal sense. strategy to get away from almost anything that could track you down. Anything that's Except faster than you, you're better yeah. off. Yeah. A bullet, a cheetah, an alligator, anything that's faster, you probably zigzag. The cheetah, you're probably... <laughs> I mean, you're still better off zigzagging yeah, 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 yeah. than going straight. Uh, I don't Maybe. think you're better off doing anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I think, I think you're better you. off praying. They got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're probably best off going toward it, like like you're big and angry. Okay. Maybe. I, probably. That's your only chance. Against a cheetah. With a cheetah. So yeah. this reminds yeah. me, though. Chance. So the crocodile, I guess, like- it, Still going to lose, but- They said like, um, I don't know, a million years ago or something that they uh, suspect that used to have really long legs. Yeah. In that it could run. Like it could run what? at its prey with its big ass, like chomping mouth. Oh, okay. That would be, you would be seriously fucked. They, they reach speeds of 25 miles an hour. Wow. See, that's a fat, that's with those little fat legs. No, that's actually pretty fast. Yeah, faster than me. Faster than me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, wouldn't that, don't you think that zigzagging would probably be the universal way to get away from anything that's faster than you? Uh, maybe not killer bees. You probably want to run straight. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ever think about that? <laughs> what you would do if you got attacked by I mean, by what's bees? the move? You want to get like a stick or something to just right up its throat, you know? Like, no, oh. the way to, the way, I'm going to speak, <laughs> we're talking like we're experts. We don't know the whole time. <laughs> I guess if an alligator is coming at you, you got to jump on it, hug its Just head. Just headlock what? it. Is that right? It can't open then, it. But then it's going to do the death roll, and then it's going to throw you off. Not and... in the water. I'm sure in the water, yeah, you're done. But you got to stay on. You ever see the guys catch the alligators? Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. The... You get, because it, if you keep the jaw together, they don't have the, the strength, the strength open to open. Yeah. It's all about the, the, the hinging cl the close. closing power. Oh, that's interesting. So it has incredible closing power, incredible. but not opening power. Like if the, you, the biggest it, force out of any animal. If like, you turn it upside down, that something happens to the brain where they, they go limp. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, they'll catch Start one. Start petting its belly. And they'll like flip it upside belly. down and it like goes limp for some reason. <laughs> That's actually fascinating. Yeah, isn't that, uh, isn't that weird? I, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was uh, learning so yeah, it says that alligators have almost no muscle power when it comes to opening their jaws. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. They can close hell the harder than almost any other yeah. animal. You mm -hmm. can hold their mouth shut with one hand. What? Yeah. That's they, a good fact to know right there. This Don't massive alligator. It. The only problem yeah, yeah, is if you, you want to try it, if you yeah, miss, like, and then and then it clamps down on your arm. Hey, there speaking, goes your speaking arm. Speaking of wrestling, okay, uh, did you guys see um, uh, Zuckerberg Jiu Jitsu? Oh yeah, he did it right. Won a one. Yeah, yeah, he did it right. He won a tournament. Yeah, bro, that's like legit. Yeah. No, you know what? I mean, you can't win a tournament and not be good, right? Hey, seriously though, that would suck. Did to you look at his him. technique, Sal? Was it uh, he's new? Sound or he's, what? He, I mean, for for his belt, he's actually pretty what, what belt is he? He was white. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, he was he was new. Okay, so he's real new. But hey, seriously though, I'm not gonna talk shit because I mean he could be a who knows, right? But he looks like a fucking nerd. Are you imagine losing to him? Oh my god, yeah. he's so pissed. Like Zuckerberg, you imagine <laughs> yeah. losing to that guy? Yeah. I'd be all embarrassed. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I know. Go to sleep. <laughs> meta, meta. You know? Why you out? I drink like a human. <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was impressive. I thought, yeah. oh wow. Actually, no, all joking aside, he he I mean, was for his rank and stuff, he did well, dude. And he looks like he's fit and strong. And, and I would think that anybody who is going against him actually That's would hilarious. want to beat him or punk him so they could say that. Like, oh, I beat Mark Zuckerberg in a freaking jiu-jitsu match. I want to see him well, go we played him. in uh, little league baseball, right? He's, he has a little baseball <laughs> oh, yeah, card. Baseball card. Yeah, that is that went, true? It went on uh, eBay. He showed you. Yeah. 
Remember like somebody bought it. Uh, like he sold his uh, little I don't remember baseball that. card. When did you bring that up? On the show? Long time ago, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't listen to you a lot of times. I know. No, sorry. <laughs> Sal, Sal listen to me. Uh, what you say? I thought you were my friend. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, I would like to see Elon Musk go against him now. Huh? That'd be a nice little... little <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Whoever wins gets to... Get to control <laughs> battle of the gajillionaires. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, oh, speaking of animals and stuff, do you guys hear what they did in China? They always do cool stuff over there, huh? <laughs> yeah, really cool uh, experiments. Yeah, yeah they just they stuff. go for it. You know, it's like uh, ethics, what did we whatever. clone or what did we give like some intelligence to? <laughs> they <laughs> put, uh, they put a the an intelligence a human. Oh my god, I was intelligence just gene. I was totally kidding into <laughs> monkeys. So Chinese researchers yeah, what did could that. Go wrong. They took an intelligent gene like a gene that we've located for intelligence in humans and they put it into monkeys and the monkeys had better short term uh, memory hmm. and seemed to be able to figure things out better than the other monkeys. So I feel like there's a movie. Yeah. There might be a movie this. that covered, you know, maybe some of the ideas. Why that weren't, uh, Great. What's the goal, by the way, with that? Like to to make monkeys sm like smarter? Why would they want? Well, to do you that? Uh, you said it. You've said it before um, on the podcast. I think oh. it's a great way of saying it. Just that science doesn't ask if we should. It just asks it's, if we can. Can, can, yeah, can, can we? Can, can we do it? Uh, just on top of that is like I guess there's a. Uh, I don't know exactly where, but they're actually developing um, ways to bring back Neanderthal. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah. What, what? Why would we do that? Why? Why would we do that? And then the, the whole issue is really it's like. Uh, I think it this was Michio Kaku brought this up. Yeah. yeah. And so he was like, the, the the one hang up for them is like, maybe it's not ethical. Like, what if they grow up <laughs> and we're going to put them in a zoo? And they're like, all, like discussing all this. I'm so like, do you know that? So when it comes to Neanderthals, there's a miss, there's this uh, misunderstanding that they were stupid, that they were dumb. Like we say in Neanderthal, we don't know a, anything. Like, well, well, the truth is that they were probably as intelligent, if not more intelligent. Well, they interbreeded with us. Yeah. So when you look at the brain cavity and some of the art that they created or tools that they created, it seems like they were very intelligent. Don't they have a larger brain? Larger brain. Larger brain. Now, now the, the reason why we, we killed them or we beat them is because if we mate with a Neanderthal, that offspring can only have children with a with a because of the genetics with a modern human. Not another, so we literally beat them through outbreeding them, but also because modern humans were better adapted to hunting uh, and organizing hunting with with spears and distance. Whereas Neanderthals were shorter, stockier, stronger. Mm -hmm. Probably did more hunting close quarters. Do they, they always tougher. have those seriously protruding foreheads? I mean, I think so. What yeah. does that say right there? They were highly intelligent. Yeah. Uh, able to adapt to a wide variety of ecological zones and capable of developing highly functional tools. Yeah, they were smarter. Mm -hmm. while that they, I mean, they, they had bigger brains than we did. Yeah. So the theory is that, I mean, the, well, we know through genetics is that we just outbred them. So we. Were, I thought I thought the, there wasn't a, a direct correlation with size of brain and intelligence, though. I thought well, it, this is these are all like obviously they were making tools. They spoke language. Yeah. They're related to humans. In which case, brain size might be correlated to intelligence. Hmm. But yeah, you're right, because a whale isn't as smart as... Right, right. Yeah. What does it say there, Doug? No, you, uh, you can oh, see the size the, yeah. of their skull, right? It's much larger. Yeah, but uh, I mean, most people have some Neanderthal, or a lot of people have some Neanderthal D uh, DNA in them. So we definitely had sex with My them. roommate from college looks like it, for really? sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big ass forehead. Really? Yeah, huge human being. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Dude, you got some... You got some oh, you got some God. genetics, dude. You got some genetics. Oh. <laughs> Box adventure. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. What'd you guys all do for uh, Mother's Day? Did you guys, everyone with their moms? What'd you guys do? No, I just had a... Just had a... Uh, give You know, a couple gifts to Jessica and then had a nice... Couple uh, gifts. Look at you. Well, one was the, the, the... Oh, did she like her thing? Yeah, the one... She, yeah, so the crystal laser like uh it's like a i don't know what you would call it it's like a block it's a crystal i posted like a video of mine on, the, on, on my story and it get and you you, you upload a picture it's, it's 3d it's three it's really cool cool yeah. it's a little pricey but it's really cool yeah um and then i got her some at-home massage um because she really appreciates it and then the whole day was do like whatever she wants and you know mm -hmm. kind of pamper her type of day although sure. we did have a conversation she would have preferred if i planned something so next time <laughs> That's great. We I did know. have a conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> had a conversation about it. Yeah, yeah. It would have been better. Yeah, just to be more thoughtful, yeah. like uh, to right. have more of a plan. <laughs> I thought that was a good plan, but anyway. Yeah, Jim, you came with two gifts. That's pretty good, I mean, bro. You know what? I you know what you got to figure out. You got to learn is that you might 
your language of gift, it may not be the same as the other person. So I, so I like, like yeah, Katrina is. and I are not the same. Yeah, yeah like you like bougie, off. expensive shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She probably likes like handwritten notes and poetry. Totally. Yeah, yeah no. To Katrina's uh, words yeah. of affirmation and stuff oh, like that for sure. What, so what would you guys do? Uh, we were at her her mom's. I mean, it's pretty traditional for us to be at, uh, all. And what happens at their house is all the all the men basically cook, clean, like take care of the, so the girls don't have to do anything, right? So all the all the wives and and moms and everybody uh, just to get they get to have champagne and chill and do their thing, and then all the guys pretty much when we do because the girls normally coordinate. Like if we're having like a family party, the girls tend to coordinate like what's being served and who's of course. Making, so they did none of that. What. Yeah, did. they did none of that. So let we me had, guess, you guys barbecued steak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, barbecue pretty much. and wine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Slice uh, up some watermelon. Uh, some steak, I, bro, some I'm so, potato actually, I mean, in there I mean, her family because all the all the guys all bring it. You know, so the, it, it, we still had like. Oh, that's true. You guys. Good yeah, at, yeah. Know, so it was really actually good. really. I mean, we had kebabs and ribeyes, and we had hors d'oeuvres, and there was all kinds of cheese and crackers oh, and dips, nice. and like yeah. So they go, they go all out. But we did, uh, we did that. Just yeah. kind of hung out. Um, I did go the night before uh, to Joe Coy, which was really interesting for me. So uh, you guys know that um, I used to run the cannabis club on Second Street, which was across the street from the Improv. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. So this was like over a decade ago. And when I used to do that, I became friends with the G GM at the time of the Improv. And so he used to like hook it up and I'd go there all the time. Like so, and I actually watched Joe Coy on his come up. So he was like, Wednesday night. I watched him on a mini Wednesday nights wow, wow. Yeah. in San Jose when there's Jay's 20, now. 20, 30 people in there. He sold out SAP. I mean, mm -hmm. sold out. And I actually almost didn't go. Like Katrina and I, we bought the tickets way in advance for my niece and everything like that. I was being a little ball humbug about it. I'm like, oh man, I just want to relax. I don't want to go to San Francisco and do uh, parking. And Katrina's like, it's not even in San Francisco, you dummy. It's SAP. And I'm like, oh shit, it's right here. And I'm like, Okay, I'll go. So I was just like, so I kind of went in with that attitude of like, eh, I've already seen this guy a bunch of times. So good. So yeah. good. I was so impressed. The least, at least the first 30 to 45 minutes of his, his deal was all off the cuff, working the audience. And oh, I, wow. he had me within the first five minutes in tears. Oh, wow. So good, dude. Oh, good, good. But I mean, talk about what pretty neat to see, you know, over this guy on how long he's been hustling. And then to see at the level that he's at now where he's selling out SAP, 14,000 people, mm -hmm. you know, to this place. I thought, wow, that was real. That's pretty cool. My in-laws love Sick. him. Love him. Yeah. Jessica's dad's girlfriend he's really is funny, Filipino. Dude. They love him. Yeah. He's like he, royalty. Yeah. To, to yeah. I, would, I imagine, like, you mean, I mean, who were the, like, uh, Manny Pacquiao, Joe Coy, like you go to the Philippines and they're like, like kings, kings. like everybody worshiped him. A lot of, a lot of people. Uh, in my family, some of that have, have always really liked him. I just didn't, I didn't know if he was going to bring new stuff, but I didn't, he, so his thing, his claim is that he does a show and it's the, uh, like, like if he does like a Netflix, he's got three different Netflix series that he's done. After that, he retires the jokes. Mm -hmm. So material's done after. So that. yeah, so he don't go, he does, I, I, I thought maybe he, because some it. guys do that, right? Yeah. They they have like a special they and then you go see, you go see, and then they keep repeating. Yeah, then you go see him yeah. live and you kind of know the, and it just, it just doesn't hit the same when you know, you know, what, how, how the joke is and everything like that. And so, yeah, everything was 100% brand new. Half of it was off the cuff from the audience. Like it was awesome. Yeah, it was wow. a awesome. Really good experience. What did you guys do, Justin? Yeah. So um, there's this kind of funny term that uh, was brought up uh, in one of our recent podcasts called a uh, chore play. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a lot of chore play going on. This <laughs> Just doing chores right now. <laughs> yeah. Caught up on fixing. I don't know, like ten or twelve things uh, around the house and like building stuff and and getting things set in. Ethan Everett's room and then downstairs in my room and then are, are the man cave. And then um, also just like hanging stuff around. But like we originally were going to go to the pinnacles because Courtney really likes to go on nature hikes That's and great stuff. hiking over there. Yeah. And we were like planning on doing that on Mother's Day. And then Everett wasn't feeling so good and he's like pretty under the weather. And so we just kind of decided to, to hang out and chill. Uh, and so I made her breakfast and stuff and did the scrambled eggs. But I don't cook at all. And so I was like, I can do breakfast and grilling. And that's <laughs> like, that's like my, you know, capacity for, for cooking. So she appreciated that. But um, yeah, so I 
just basically we were doing all the things and and trying to make her as comfortable as possible but she just she's a busy body and was out you know doing chores and stuff with us so but but i'm telling you yes as dysfunctional as that is or whatever you know that got brought up it's like dude it oh works. the chore the i'll tell you what it, it works, works. <laughs> it, it works and so well you know her so love good. language could be acts of service yeah that's probably what it is so yeah. that's a so even though he brought that up as like a you know one of the whatchamacallit like a slight yeah yeah, yeah like just a, a joke you know it's kind of funny that guys do that yeah, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, but that is like hit home because I'm like, that's like a, my go-to. That's not, that's not just like a kind of do it. You know, it's like, it's like okay, if things are kind of like, uh, you know. Do you not, go around the house breaking things on purpose? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Not, not on hey, that look, level, dude. But the drawer's broken. Yeah. I'll I just know it. I got to be busy and like doing stuff and like taking care of things and then everything's great. So oh, that, yeah. that's good. So you guys had a good time. We had a good time. Ah, that's good. Now is is, is is Courtney more uh, like you know her love language? Is she more gives words affirmation? Is she service acts of service? Service like, more and like yeah. she really likes um I mean her expression of uh cooking and all that, she really pours like like I mean, we have we have um uh like herbs and and uh we have all kinds of stuff she grows outside now specifically, so it's like uh like we like she was part of the growing it process and bringing it in to feed mm. us. And like, we also always did like farm to plate, uh, like CSA stuff. And like, so her whole thing was always just like the, the, the most like quality food, uh, possible and her like preparing it with love and everything. And so, and, and it's, it's one of those weird things. You're just like, I taste the difference. I feel the difference, you know, in comparison to like, you know, somebody else that just puts it together and they're not really into it. Yeah. Uh, like she goes above and beyond a lot with that stuff. And so she's, that's very much her. She's not so much a touchy feely. She's not like, I'm totally that guy. Like, I was like, dude, you got to touch me. You got to hug me. Yeah. You know? Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, and just like constantly like telling her, you know, like most yeah. of the time, like I acknowledge these things and I think she wants to hear it from me. So so would you say this mother's, did you do well or did you get, uh, did you get corrected like Sal did after this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was, <laughs> yeah, Sal could have been better. I think I probably could have done, uh, well, I could have, I, you know, I got, I've got her gifts too. And like, it was very much, so this is another thing. Um, like I'm a very good gift giver, terrible gift receiver. And mm. I know you yeah, probably you are the same. Um, so I listen to something she says like throughout the year and I'm just like psh, mental note, or I'll write it down. And then I'll usually buy her something. And she's like, whoa, I can't believe you remember. I'm like, yeah, I just, you know, wrote it down. Um, and uh, so this wasn't that case. I was like, she's, <laughs> she grew happen. up, <laughs> she grew up, like she says specifically what she wants. And then they specifically go get it. Mm. Like, it's almost like a, a, a laundry list it's, or like mm. a grocery list. Like here, I want this thing and then go get it. Yeah. And I'm like, it's so boring. And like, <laughs> like th there's no, like, where do I come in? I'm just basically your uh, your errand boy, yeah. you know? And so that's how I felt. I felt like it's just an errand boy going to get this thing. Yeah. And then I bought it for her and then I get like the flowers and this, and, and she's like, yay, all stoked on it. And I'm just like, yeah. So it was, it was more me. Like, I think I was like, uh, not that excited about it, but yeah. she was stoked on it. So. That's how I grew up. Like you, you tell them what you want and then that's what they go. They give you, give them a list and they get, yeah. And Jessica's like you. She's like, that's dumb. Yeah. Don't like do that. I like, could just do that. Like, I'll just go on Amazon. Boom. Yeah, here I just, that makes I, sense. I push the yeah. button. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, oh that, that means so much more because I, I push the button. Push the button. <laughs> that, that makes sense. That's fucking sense. dumb. I yeah. know it is. That makes sense. Yeah, sure. I I've gotten better about. So I told you, Justin. I don't know if I share that with Sal or not, but where I'm I'm really good throughout the year of like getting her like gifts that I think of that I think are like I'll have a moment where I'm like, oh, she needs this or just be right, and I'll and I'll just buy it, and then I just normally just give it to her. No, I got to take um, a page out of your. But yeah, so here. so I do that throughout the year. What I'm terrible at is like, because you know we don't run our calendars, right? None of us mm -hmm. in here, right? So I'm like, mm -hmm. so a lot of times she'll like tell me like, oh, you know, three days is so and so's birthday, or I'm like, oh my god, like I didn't, mm -hmm. I don't know, it came up on me. So this year, what I did, I started buying back in like late last year, early next year. I just when I that ha I'd happen, I buy it, but then I just leave it. I wouldn't let her open it. I just sit in the house. So I started stacking up boxes. <laughs> so she had like three Mother's Day. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, yeah, right. And the, the funny part about it was she didn't believe me. 
Cause she's like, what's in the box? I'm like, oh, that's your, that's your mother's day gift. Yeah. This is like four months ago. I was like, that's your mother's day gift. What's that box? Oh, that's your birthday gift. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's Christmas. I'm like, so I kept telling her that. And she just thought that's I was smart. She thought I was bullshitting her yeah. because I was so in advance. But then I, I obviously I couldn't wait for all of them for all of her. But so on mother's day, basically the day before I let her open one, the, and then the, or the two days before the day before, and then the morning of. So she had like, that's a gift so day. smart. But it had been sitting there forever, and, and she, I was she, like, did you really believe that? I, she's like, yeah, I really thought that that was you. Because she's like, I've seen you leave box stuff that not open it. She goes, for a long time. She goes, I thought it was something for yourself. That is so smart. Cause, yeah. So the only problem with that is I'm terrible at buying a gift and then not giving it to So them. am I. I get so excited. So am I. So that's why it, uh, th those really were, like, see, when I told Justin this, the intent was, like, that is, like, was supposed to be Mother's Day. Yeah birthday yeah. christmas they're all big gifts they're all nice gifts so they all they all should be like a, a holiday type of gift but i couldn't wait i'm like oh my yeah. god i'm gonna wait until november to give the rest of them <laughs> but I at least you know you got it there but, like so you're not in but a yeah jam. and i'm gonna do it yeah. again so like now because i got all the way till november to the birthday you know I'm, uh, something will come up between now and then of something that i know that is thoughtful that sure and all three gifts were very thoughtful and cool and yeah. she loved all of them. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not giving them to her until it's a no, so I'm, yeah, cover I'm my ass. Reserve, you know what I'm or what would happen is I would normally have given those away. And then, oh, it's a week before Mother's Day. And then I'm like scrambling to just get something that's not thought out. That's yeah. and it's and then it comes out that way when she gets it. She's like, oh, I'm good cool. at I'm pretty good at getting gifts. I'm not good at like the thoughtful plan. Like that I have to work on for sure. And Jessica kills me on that. Like last Father's Day, I told you guys, like I came home and I had this, all these post-it notes covering the door of the things that my kids love. Like she actually organized the kids to write down things that they love about me. And she was like, the whole door was covered and I'm like, Oh my God. And then we had someone yeah, come nice. and make dinner for us. And it was this wonderful, like whole thing. So yeah. when it comes to that stuff, I suck. Yeah. I got to work on that. <laughs> well, I'm good at gifts. That's what I tend to do. You know, yeah, you, know, yeah. you got to speak the other person's language, I guess. Right, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, did you guys see the controversy over, um, the Netflix, uh, Cleopatra? Release? Did you see this? No. Uh. Uh. So, so, I believe Egypt banned it. What? Because you know Cleopatra, right? She was in Egypt. Like she was one of their like uh, what are queens. They, what, yeah. So they they banned it because who directed it? Was it Will Smith's wife? I think it was Will Smith's wife. Jada. I believe so. Maybe Doug can find out for us. Um, but she she made Cleopatra of African origin. Okay. Hmm. Now, there's lots and lots of historical reference to Cleopatra. So this, this is actually quite accurate. They know that Cleopatra was of uh, Macedonian. She was Greek ancestry. She had Greek features. Mm. Because they went and, and tried to, I guess, make this thing that she was African, the Egyptians are like, this is not accurate. And they totally banned the whole thing. So it's this huge controversy. Interesting. Over, because it wasn't yeah. a fictional character. It's one thing if it's a fictional character. Yeah. Like Disney will do this a lot. Well, they'll change a character or whatever. People sure. will get up in arms, but it's like, well, it's a fictional character. Yeah, it's fictional. Okay. This is a historical person. So it's like Abraham Lincoln, you know, is, you know, Chinese or whatever. It's like, right. no, that's not, that's not accurate. Well, like I told you guys, like Genghis Khan was played by John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slap. <laughs> they did that. So <laughs> where do you guys, where, where do you guys draw the line on the, you know, this, the virtue signaling of this stuff that goes on? Like, where is it for you? Like you just brought up something I think is an, an interesting yeah. point. Like it's like, okay, it's a fictional character. So who cares if they change sure. the race, ethnicity of somebody, of a fictional character yeah. like that? And, but then with someone mm. like this who historically is of a certain race to not make them that yeah. is like, okay, that's kind of, ridiculous. or they go out of their way to make it. So, so it wasn't, it, they literally made it out of the way to say that she's of African origin. Who is it? Was it Jada? No, she was the narrator. The director was Tina Garavi. Okay. But Jada was involved in it. Yes. So, okay. Um, I think first off, it becomes too obvious when a company <clears throat> takes like a, a story that's already popular in media and then changes things to make it more, it, it seems like virtue signaling. I so watched that, I obvious. watched Peter yeah. Pan this weekend with my son and felt exactly that. Yeah. If, like every character. Like Tinkerbell, it changed. Tinkerbell, her, Peter Pan, Lost Boys got, like they literally like inserted yeah. so much of it. It was just like, it's too It seems much. obvious. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so that, I get that. But again, fictional characters, whatever. But when you take a real historical person, and you go out of your way to change it, and then mm. then that seems that doesn't seem that seems stupid. Yeah. And Cleopatra, like I said, there's it's lots the story of story uh, historically inaccurate. Yeah, yes. and I mean there, it, there's lots of uh, like records on her, and that was just inaccurate. So that's oh, where it's kind of like ridiculous. Interesting. Yeah. I Not, feel like it would be better received in like the U.S., but I, I I can understand that Egypt very protective of their historical yeah. accuracy. And there's look look it, it, I mean it, it, a lot of the history there was definitely huge African influence. I mean Egypt's right there. Right. 
But you know, you're talking about a historical figure like that's like well documented, like yeah. Cleopatra. So I could get it. But Egypt went as far as to ban it. Yeah, that's, which is like that's. And yeah. they, they, I'm assuming they openly said why too. Yeah. So that's how you know that. Yeah. Oh. That's I, I wonder how much that'll even affect the sales and and the what. Oh, I think it's tanking. I think it got really got one star. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Well, again, I think you know what happens is when you try too hard yeah. to to go in a particular direction then you ruin you ruin the fact that it might be a good story might be good so writing. i so so i feel that way even about fictional characters my thought on that yeah, is look like at the, the shit audience one percent from the audience 13 percent you got the lowest audience score ever wow <laughs> wow that's, that's crazy yeah wow i don't yeah. think i've ever seen something score that bad no i don't like, can you get lower than one well peter pan got pretty bad too what if, show me peter pan because i think peter pan i felt did the same thing for me um so because Peter Pan's story has already been told, I have a problem with it. If it's a brand yeah. new story, go for it. Do whatever you yeah, want. Totally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, create I, I, something new uh, uh, and, you know, have that in mind. Right. Cause then it's authentic. You're writing into it. That was the same thing with Willow as well. And I, I literally watched one episode and was like, I'm out. Yeah. It's just too much um, of all different categories, like smashed into one. They're story. trying. Yeah. They're trying I, too look, hard. if I'm a part of the creation of fictional stories and they, and I'm in the room, and they're like, I'm going to say, okay, there's things that we're going to do that can make this not make people not want to watch it. And one of those things is if we, if it looks like we're trying too hard to insert, you know, new topics or political motives or whatever, that's just going to hurt the sales. But again, at the end of the day, they're either going to sell tickets or not. So they'll get the, they'll get the market response. But when it comes to like real people in history, mm -hmm. You got to be accurate unless you're you're making it a musical or making it something that's an adaptation and you know this is not really but if if they're depicted because they're trying to depict it as like historical yeah like this is historical this is what we're watching right now is what happened with Cleopatra in that case it's like yeah. okay now you, I could totally see that yeah and that's why they got such a bad rating yeah mm. was from that so I thought that was uh, yeah, mm. that was a thing anyway down the down the rabbit hole of uh, historical stuff in media I went down the rabbit hole of how muscles became popular in media do you know one of the first characters that people considered muscular? Popeye? No. Well, he was a cartoon. Oh. Uh, Tarzan. Mm. Doug, look up the original Tarzan. I want you guys to look at this guy and tell me if you think he's muscular. Everybody Johnny talk, Weissmuller, I think. Everybody talked about how fit and muscular he was. Uh, and this was uh, in the 1940s. You can switch the TV, Doug. I think. And, and then it yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm that, putting what, him up right now. That Skarsgård guy, like, did it recently? I know, like, Courtney's sister is in love with him. Okay. So. Well, you so, know, oh yeah. Uh, show show a picture of him as Tarzan. So every everybody talked about how fit and like muscular and I mean, look at that picture in the upper middle, Doug. That's the one that yeah, uh, yeah. that everybody uses. He was a high level swimmer. Um, so that's, he the, looks like what it. Uh, year was that? I want to say it was the 1950s or forties. So Tom Bilyeu and, uh, Derek from more plates, more dates had a conversation around this that I thought was, uh, a clip that's going around right now that I think is a, an interesting point that he brings up because Tom was ask, asking about people like failing to achieve like this, the, the physical, the, yeah. the, the pursuit that they want with that. And he made the case of like how distorted that's become yep. because of, and I agree. It's just like, so that's what I'm pointing out. Yeah. This is an example of like, that he's was a like fit, that's, super muscular. Yeah. Fit. That's a fit, healthy, obviously high performing athlete. Cause he was a high level swimmer. Yeah. Today, if you put him anywhere on any media or movie, not a single person would, would comment on his physique. He yeah. looks like a dad bod. Dad bod. Yeah. yeah. That's what they would say. Yeah. But it started to progress from there to where then you had the muscle beach movies, which made fun of bodybuilders. So muscle beach movies, had bodybuilders, but they were not depicted as being cool. They were yeah, like, like dum dums. Yeah, like dum dums and you know meatheads and yeah. super into their bodies, like narcissistic and flexing in front of mirrors. Yeah. But then it progressed from there, and really it was, it wasn't until the eighties. So the seventies didn't even show super muscular people. They showed manly people, like yeah. you know, like like hairy chest and like what's that guy's name? Burt Reynolds. Yeah, like some guys like that, right? Yeah. But they didn't even. They look like normal fit. Like just it was the eighties where it went ape shit. When you had, you know, that was obviously the movies we grew up watching. Well, Pumping yeah, Iron yeah, yeah. was not, was Pumping Iron not the main? That was a documentary in the 70s. But that was like the main introduction of like real muscular guys. That like, was the first time bodybuilders were not depicted as idiots because you had yeah. Arnold who was charismatic and smart. And that was the first time people, one of the reasons why Pumping Iron Crush, actually the reason was Arnold. Yeah. Because you're like, this is a bodybuilder, but look how smart he is and how uh, charismatic yeah. he is. So that kind of broke that that whole thing. But it was the 80s, 80s action yeah. movies. Yeah, action movies. You get the Predator, which I was actually talking with my kids about, and like they're all hyped now at the age where they're 
way more interested in, in like some of those kind of manlier action movies. And so yeah. we started with Conan, which was kind of meh. Uh, I'm going to show him Predator. But what we did was we watched over the weekend, we watched 300. And oh, yeah. it was like, dude, and you should have seen, like, I was just, I was watching them half the time just to see like how they're reacting. They're like, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> like getting into it. And I'm like, dude, like there's none of these movies left because that's so toxic or whatever like dude <laughs> they like nothing really has come close to uh capturing like what a badass like warrior movie uh you know can stimulate in a young boy like that oh, like, yeah. like that's the thing like they don't have an example of that anymore we've we've like i don't know man i watched john we've wick. cleared <laughs> yeah john wick but i mean that's just like it's there's no moral to that story you know what i'm saying he just yeah, shoots everybody Braveheart with him yeah, Braveheart was another good Braveheart? one. Yeah, and that but that's the thing they're defending their yeah. their home and they, and they, and they're and they're doing oh, it with the utmost saying. respect yeah, that's and, and they have respect for women yeah. and it's like like it, just that portrayal with his dynamic with his wife uh you know 300 I thought was like really cool. Did you know that line she tells him? I think I hope I'm not wrong cuz I'm going to get hammered. That line she says um uh come back with your shield or on your shield. Yeah. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to get hammered if I'm wrong. That in one of the branches of the Greek military, that it says that, mm -hmm. like on your, like with your shield or on your shield. It's like yeah, a, I a think classic saying. They uh, tried to be accurate in terms of uh, like some of the events. Obviously, it's like fully, you know, weird comic book distorted. Yeah, it was made off of a. But um, it, yeah, they they did account for novel. most of the uh, events pretty accurately. Yeah, yeah, Sp the Spartan. Um, the way that they waged war and stuff, really fascinating. If you watch oh. their strategies and stuff. Watching them as a unit, you yeah. know, that's the thing. Other thing, it's like watching like men work together. A couple quotes are famous quotes that they apparently did say. Like the one about, uh, you know, we'll fight in the shade. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's a historical yeah, quote. I think. Great line. Again, I might be wrong again. We get some, great line. Like some Greek people. Yeah, this, well, it says this, come back with your shield or on it is an ancient uh, Greek phrase. Damn. Now I, I, I do want to say I want to say this, dude. Like you could be going off to do this very terrible, scary thing. This is just I'm going to be very generalized here. As a man, you're going to go off and you're like, I'm probably I might die, but I'm doing this for my family. And if your wife says that to you, she'll probably increase your odds of surviving because oh, I think so. If you hear that from your own Com wife, confidence wise, don't come back. Yeah. You know, you either come back dead or a lot. You know, or confidence, or purpose, yeah. right there. Like, you got to go anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't make me all sad. And yeah, fucking. and scared. Yeah, yeah scared. You make like, me feel tough. Does that you know? Help me. You know? Yeah, I want to feel me. strong, honey. Yeah, <laughs> pump me up, dude. You hide. Don't yeah. get killed. Whatever. You're, You're like, gonna oh. kill like 500 guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring back five heads. Like, oh, yeah. okay, honey. Uh, I'll go and do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so we were supposed to mention Paleo Valley. I'll tell you what, man. Probably one of the most accurate quotes on any supplement I've ever said in my entire life. What's that? Was how the, their bone broth, oh, the chocolate, or the vanilla is the best tasting. I think you thing. sold them out because of that. So, like, it's 100% the best tasting protein powder you've ever had in your life. I told you I had it, right? Did, did you? I, Justin I took something in the did. back. Yeah, I found it, yeah. and I, I took it back. With vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. So, was, was that right or what? It was really good. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, it, creamy, it doesn't taste delicious. like protein powder. Yeah, it's like milkshake-y. Yeah, it tastes right. like, yeah. like you blended up a chocolate donut yeah. with some milk. That's what it yeah. tastes like. I, he, I, sure. I was walking in the back when he was doing it. I was like, oh, you've had it. I was like, he's like, bro, I was not bullshitting. It's actually really good. <laughs> and you like, guys are really like about normally. No, I'm, like skeptical. I'm skeptical when you yeah. say stuff like that. So, you know, you how you are with all the supplements. So good, stuff, so. right? No, that's what that Justin. I haven't had it still. It, it, so yeah, lived up to I don't hype. make shakes here. So I know it's like I'm terrible. Like everybody's like waiting for to hear my opinion on it. But I'm. I know. You know what I'm going to do, dude? Next time we have a mention for them, I'm going to blend some up and have you taste it on air. Because. A Adam's face cannot lie when he doesn't like the taste <laughs> of something. Even if there's money on the line, lying you'll see his face uh -huh. if he yeah. likes it or not. Uh -huh. So he'll be like, "No, I'll yeah. taste it." I just, I literally do not take shakes here. I don't drink. I, you know how I drink yeah. my shakes. If I drink shakes, it's at nighttime. You and do only shake enemas because you want I, direct. Yes, stupid, yeah, only because yeah. I have to. You know who we should shout out? We already shouted out Adam lane smith's uh instagram and stuff but let's talk about his book you're reading his book right now yeah no i'm going through his book right now it's called uh slaying your fear so great great read i'm about halfway through it right now and um like most all his content i'm such a huge fan of his stuff i know it's uh we tend to get excited about somebody who we like we have, i've only been following him for a short period of time maybe the last year and the deeper i go in his stuff the more and more i like his content you guys will have an episode of him coming out pretty soon here so looking forward to that all right, check this out. There's a company called Organifi that makes organic supplements 
for wellness, health, and athletic performance. They have a pre-workout called Peak Power. This is a healthy one that gives you balanced energy. They have a green juice to give you micronutrients from green vegetables and plants. They have a red juice for energy and a gold juice for sleep and a lot of other stuff. Go check them out. We've been with them for a very long time. One of the most, uh, one of the best quality supplement companies we found. Go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump. Get 20% off. All right, back to the show. First caller is James from Oklahoma. James, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Well, uh, yeah, this is uh, kind of crazy. I'm, I'm pretty nervous, not going to lie. <laughs> so uh, uh, I just, uh, I, I wanted to get on here and I just wanted to uh, ask a couple questions here. Um, I've just a little bit of background and I'm just going to try to read directly from what I've got here so I don't get off topic too much. Okay. Um, so a little bit of background, I've kind of been into health and fitness my whole life. I kind of started out as a power lifter and a runner. Um, I've kind of transitioned over the years to just trying to be uh, healthy and strong and functional and be more mobile. And I've kind of been helping some people do that. Um, we live in a pretty low income area and a lot of people struggle with understanding it and how to apply it. And they, a lot of people think that it needs to be hard and it doesn't have to be hard. It's just to be consistent. Um, but I've, I've used a lot of your information and your programming to be able to help people. I mean, I've, I've modified several different programs from MAPS Anabolic to Split. Uh, my youngest son is currently on uh, MAPS Powerlift right now. And by the way, uh, he, goes, he has one week left in that. And as of this morning, his bench press is up like 15 or 20 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty significant, you know, and, and he's not, and he's a, he's a pretty strong kid to start with. So anyway, um, the biggest question that I had is um, finally convinced my wife to strength train by, by getting her to listen to you guys a little bit. And then she started seeing some other women that were showing some, some progress in the strength training spectrum. And um we started MAPS Anabolic in um, July of 2022. Um, she, she does have some mobility issues. She has a hip that may at some point have to have some surgery done on it. They've not decided for sure on that yet. And so I've modified a lot of stuff. I've, I've taken her squats from a back squat to like a Bulgarian split squat with a little more limited mobility. Um, some, um, and then also some air squats to get depth and things like that, but just try to work on mobility over the past, over the first three month spectrum of that program. And I guess it was 12 weeks total, including the pre-phase. She saw, I mean, a mobility change outrageously. I mean, she was just so excited one day she was able to bend over and I mean, I squat down and pick something off the floor without bending over. I mean, it was just a huge, huge, huge difference. And by sticking to that program, I did kind of try to go with what you guys said. Um, don't take anything away. Um, she's a little bit of a bigger woman to start with. Um, hopefully, she doesn't nail me to the cross here on this deal. But she started right <laughs> around 257. Um, she's about 5'6". Um, over the course of about three months, she didn't see any weight loss at all. But what we did see is about a 23-inch total body composition change. She lost about eight inches in her waist. She lost about wow. an inch and a half each one of her legs, wow. awesome. lost half an inch in her arms, things like that. Wow. So she was like, okay, let's keep going. So we kept going. We're our third time through um, anabolic. Uh, we just finished it up. And at this point, things are starting to slow a little bit. Um, we're starting to see a we're still seeing a slight bit of weight loss. Her her weight has actually came down about 10 pounds now. Um, and the composition change is definitely there. She looks more athletic. She looks stronger. She is getting significantly stronger. When we started with the uh, dumbbell bench presses and stuff, and we're talking like 10 pounds was pretty rough on her. Uh, last week, she did the 40s for Whoa. four sets of eight. Yeah. Holy cow. You know, so yeah, I mean, it's a pretty significant <laughs> change. Um, her mobility is just off the charts. I just am to the point, though, where We've had her caloric intake. I pushed it up a little bit to start with to kind of reverse diet her a little bit. Um, minimum of 150 grams of protein a day, um, as much as possible from real food, and then supplementing with a pre work. I'm not pre work. I'm sorry, a uh, protein shake to uh, if we don't hit those goals. And she was at about 2,200 to 2,400 calories a day. Um, with that, she was still dropping inches. But now we're to the point where we were just looking at. Do 
we continue with anabolic. Do we start trying to change things up? We started split four weeks ago. Um, we will finish week four of split this Saturday. But I didn't know if that was the right course to take at this point. Do we continue with anabolic? Do we go with split? Do I try to work in something like symmetry or just not sure what how to move forward? James, really, first yeah. off, fantastic you, job. Yeah, man. you're going in the right direction. I mean, if she lost that many inches and she has strength gains, like you said, of like four times stronger on a dumbbell chest press. You're in the Goldilocks part. <laughs> yeah, she has built a significant amount of muscle and burned a significant amount of body fat. And for people watching right now thinking, how's this, how's that possible? Is that her weight doesn't go down, but she loses size. Body fat takes up roughly <clears throat> a quarter more space per pound than muscle. So when you lose 10 pounds of body fat, gain 10 pounds of muscle, you're going to lose about a quarter of your size, roughly, maybe a little less on your body. So that's what's happening. And what's happened now is you've set yourself up very well for a calorie cut because now her metabolism is probably in a healthier place. And now you can cut and she's not going to get this crazy metabolic adaptation like she might have in the beginning and she'll get leaner. As far as programming is concerned, the importance with the programming is really just what's appropriate for her body to continue her progress uh, to keep her improving mobility, to keep her in a healthy place. The the best way to go after anabolic is MAPS performance. Symmetry would be good as well. Either program would be great. If you don't have performance, I'll send that over uh, to you because that's that's ideally the direction you want to go, especially if you've done anabolic a couple times yeah. in a row. Yeah. Now, I do want to comment on the mobility thing. I want to say this just for the audience um, and even for you. The key to mobility is strength. People think it's flexibility. People, it's not. It's strength. Now, what I, what that means is not necessarily you can lift more weight, but rather you have strength in larger ranges of motion. You have enough strength to where your body doesn't get tight to try to protect itself. So, when someone starts working out, and if they do it right, they're going to see significant improvements in mobility, and that's what she did. Even though she did a non mobility program like Maps Anabolic, which is very. Mm -hmm you know, uh, you know, sagittal plane or whatever, you know, very straightforward kind of strength exercises. She saw a great improvement in, uh, in her mobility, but yeah, I, I think you can do a cut now with her. I could drop her 400, 500 calories, probably mostly okay. from carbs is what I would do. And then I would go mass performance or map symmetry. And again, if you don't have performance, we'll, we'll send that to you. That would be perfect. So I want I want to comment on that because you do have, you do have some options here. I actually think, um, and, and what matters is where her mindset is on where I would take her if she was a client. In a perfect world, I'm actually going to stay the course nutritionally, and I'm going to switch up her programming and maybe even consider increasing calories a little bit in a perfect world. And that's and what I mean by a perfect world is that she trusts me. Um, she's happy with what she's seeing. She knows the long game. She knows what we're trying to do. And we're just going to stay in this kind of Goldilocks you know, phase where we're at, where we're just, you know, dropping body fat, you know, slowly and we're increasing muscle slowly. It's a beautiful exchange. We're slowly speeding up the metabolism. We're getting better in mobility and stronger. Like it, she's in a really good suite. Now where it's difficult for some clients is that they want to see that scale go down. They've been putting all this hard work in for so long. And so if, if she's at this kind of breaking point mentally where she's frustrated you've done a good enough job now building her metabolism up that you can do exactly what Sal said to, to show her some change, like to show her some scale movement, right? You could cut 500 calories out, maybe even increase a little bit of movement. And then in, in addition to that, switch her program and she's going to drop some weight for sure. But you're, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go back to reverse dieting again sooner or later. She's not going to drop her full, you know, 70, 80, hundred pounds that she may want to lose. Mm -hmm all from just a 500 calorie yeah. deficit. What will end up happening is you'll show her a nice little drop and then eventually her body will start to adapt to that new caloric maintenance and then she'll be at a new plateau again versus just keep on this process of let's just keep slowly adding more calories and building muscle until I get you maybe to a place where you look at me and you're like, honey, I can't eat anymore. You got me eating 2,800 calories. All I think of, all I'm doing is eating all day long. Now I want to go. That's where I, that's where I want to take a client is I want to keep pushing the calories till they get to that point. And then when I reverse them or when I cut them, they're at a place where they're like content, they're losing weight, and we have more room to drop even more if I want to continue the, the weight loss. So you really kind of have those two different options. And how I decide that is kind of the mindset of where she is at. If she's 
motivated, focused, inspired, trust the process that you're in right now. I actually like the idea of continuing to add calories and continue to build the muscle because you you're, you got good momentum in that direction. But if I feel like my client's getting so discouraged that she she's not sure I, I know what I'm doing or whatever, and I'm like, okay, let me show you. I've had these conversations when they're at this point, and I go, I can drop you weight right now. Mm. You've already got it at a good place. I can show you that really quick, but it, that's not the end of the journey, right? And we can't just keep going mm -hmm. that direction of cut, 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 because then you're going to be down to 1,200 calories and miserable six months from now and still not at your final goal. So you do kind of have – a couple options right here on, on how you, uh, uh, you go after this and, and either, neither one is right or wrong. Yeah. And as you switch the stimulus up, you'll probably still be able to keep, you know, on that path of like being able to exchange and body fat and build muscle just because of the novel stimulus of it. That's so right. I like that you're moving already in that direction. Uh, obviously like I think performance is probably a really good match for that. Uh, just to consider joint health and what Sal said in terms of like, you know, it's strengthening and supporting around the joints. So that way now, uh, when she progresses even more to, uh, other programs, maybe she wants to get in power lift. Maybe she wants to get in, you know, to our other programs. Like she's going to have that sort of base support, uh, really supporting her joints. Yeah, James, uh, where's it, where's she at mentally? You know, Adam came up with, said a really good point. Where, where do you think she's at? Is she okay with, you know, what, what she's doing or is she really like, I want to see some, some movement on the scale? Well, she's definitely in that. I need to see some movement on the scale phase. You know, it's kind of one of those things to where I, physically at one point she said, here, take the scale, get rid of it. I don't want to see it. Got it. So, or I would have her way backwards or have her way to where she couldn't see it so that I can be in control of kind of how we're moving and what we're scaling and to stop focusing because that's what I tried to tell her over and over again is, is that, uh, listen, you know, you, you've just said, cause I'll ask her the same set of questions that you guys ask. How's your mobility? Do you feel like, do you feel better? Are you moving more? Do you see your strength increasing? And it's yes, 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 yes. But this one factor is the one that, you know, it, that controls that mind so much from what society and, and things have done, okay. you know, and that. Well, James, there's two things you could do with that. One, one thing that I used to do with clients in that situation is I would do, I would record body fat percentage because then I could show them weight loss in terms of fat loss and say, okay, your weight's the same on the scale. You gain this much muscle, but you actually did lose this many pounds of body fat. Sometimes that would help. But you're on the right path. And I tell you what, I think I have a happy medium for you. MAPS performance is more of a calorie burning program than MAPS mm -hmm. anabolic anyway. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you might not need to do a 500 calorie cut. You could probably do a 250, 300 calorie cut, and then MAPS performance will make up the difference. And then what you could do on top of that is you could start increasing activity throughout the day. So if she's not walking, let's say 10, 15 minutes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you could just add that. And the, that combination right there will show her some pretty good movement on the scale. Yeah, are you tracking, track are you guys steps. tracking steps at yes. all? Yes, yeah, we are, I originally started, and, and keep in mind, you know, she came from zero fitness background. So yeah. I do understand that the, the initial burst of this was just from some sort of activity. Mm -hmm. But she, I, I told her, so I would like you for two weeks to wear this tracker. I don't care what your steps are. I just need to know what your average is. And she was averaging around 6,000 a day. So we slowly over time increased that. Right now, she's averaging around 12,5 to okay. 13. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. That's you know, she's a, she's a fourth grade teacher. So she's, she's kind of taken the desk out of the scenario a little bit, tried to make sure she's moving with them as they're moving and increasing, which I would have called this a couple of weeks ago to your last interview. I believe it was with Lane Norton. I would have called it neat before. I guess that's not necessarily neat anymore, but yeah. <laughs> trying to get her step volume up. Yeah. Okay. And, so here's your three options. Option one is what Adam said, stay the course. And what mm -hmm. you'll do is present it to your wife and say, here's the pros and cons. The pros are, we're going to keep moving in the direction of a faster metabolism. Eventually, we'll get to a point where you're going to be eating so much food that you're going to be like, okay, I need to get rid of it. Like, I can't eat this much. And then the cut's going to be really easy. Option two, we do a more aggressive cut, 500 calories. We'll see more movement on the scale. But at some point, we're going to plateau, probably within, a, within 60 days, 30, 60 days. And then we're going to have to reverse again and pause that. Option three is we do something in the middle where I cut your calories about 250 and I have you do maps performance, which will burn a little extra calories. And then we try and increase your activity. So those are the three options I would present to her. And then you, you got to go pros and cons and have her pick uh, where she's going to go. But it's, it's a good, it's good to do it that way. Cause so she knows what to expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I've been doing, I've actually been doing antibiotic 
anabolic with her. And what I've been doing, and it seems to be working pretty well for me as I will bulk for, uh, I'm trying to clean bulk with real food, no mass gain or anything like that, but eat higher calories for four weeks and then lower calories for about two. I'm not going extremely low, but I'm dropping from about 3,100 calories a day to about 2,800 calories a day. So would that be something that would kind of you know, those small mini cuts or would it, should it be longer than that? Yeah, no, I mean, mini cuts are great as well. Um, are you asking for you or for your wife? For her. Yeah. I mean, a 250 calorie cut would be more of a mini, but again, okay. if you combine that with performance, she's going to burn mm -hmm. probably an additional 150, 200 calories a day with performance in comparison to anabolic because it's more of a, gotcha. it's definitely more, it, more maybe not phase focused. one, but once you get to phase two, three yeah. and four, it definitely mm -hmm. burns more calories. You know, J one last thing I want to ask James, while we have you, uh, cause we didn't get into this at all. Um, and we, yeah, cause I think you're doing a great job. I don't think we think anything is wrong here, but, um, maybe there would be even better progress if hormonally she's all balanced. Well, have you had her blood work done? Do you know where she's at yeah. hormonally and everything? She had her hormones checked. I believe it was last summer before we went in, before we went into this, I wanted to do a battery of just making sure that everything's good. She's healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, obviously I don't know what those baselines should be because this is the first time we've ran them. But, uh, I know that the, uh, she just recently went back for her yearly checkup, her, her blood lipids are better. I mean, literally all of her blood markers are better. We haven't checked the hormones since then, but they did say that she was in normal ranges. Okay. I will say that we did that at a GP versus a hormone doctor. And I have seen first case, you know, I, you know, I had a 345 testosterone GP is like, oh yeah, that's perfectly fine. Men's health doctors are like, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah so, a, they give you a big range, but if she has, yeah. if she has some pretty, you know, loud signs of hormone imbalances, you know, hot, cold intolerance, you know, poor sleep, libido mood, you know, stuff all over the place then you could definitely look there. I mean, um, at one point, I think it's I think it's a, a valuable investment. Uh, you look like you're about our age or whatever like that. I mean, getting blood work done on a semi-regular basis, I mm -hmm. think is extreme. I think it's valuable for any age, but as we get older and stuff like that, I think paying attention to that stuff uh, is even more important. So, you know, maybe worth the investment at one point, taking her to a hormone specialist, you know, and, mm -hmm. and having them kind of look at it and see if there's little tweaks that they can do. I actually just yesterday got on to Dr. Stephen Cabral's website to look at some of the things that we could do there. If you know, some of the hormone testing, how that's going to work and try to get some of that moving forward. Cause I do believe that's something that we need to address. Okay. So good. Excellent. Good. I will say too, just one last thing, not to tie up anything any longer. I was in relative, you know, I just say this for the other people that maps anabolic didn't just work for her. Um, I've been three times through anabolic. I'm into split now, but my in my three times through anabolic, I gained 18 pounds of lean muscle. And wow. I wasn't in terrible shape when this started. I've went up two and a oh, quarter yeah. inches in each one of my legs yes. in the thigh area, about a quarter to a half an inch in my calves. I've put on three quarters of an inch in my arms. My chest has grown. I mean, it's just, it's crazy how rest you know, that three days of just work and then the rest, it's just. <laughs> but anyway, it works, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A genius must have yeah, right. that program. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're going to send you so, mass performance if you don't have that. Okay, James? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, thank you. You got it, man. And good awesome. luck, huh? Great job, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep us posted, dude. Yes. Will do. Thank All you. Right. Wow, what a great, what a great direction. Yeah. Going. So I, that's obviously you've been listening to the podcast for a long time. Yeah. And I tell you, man, it's so good for people to hear that because, uh, you know, if she, he said she was 245 pounds, a lot of people of that state are like, I just want to lose weight. I don't care. Yeah. But yeah. she lost so much body fat and built so much muscle that the scale didn't move, but she lost the combined total. What do you say? 28 inches yeah. on her whole body. Shit. Like he, that, that she is setting herself up to not do what most people do, yeah, which is not put it back on, gain all the way back. Yeah. Listen, the challenge is not losing the weight. Almost everybody who tries to lose weight loses some weight. Almost all of them gain it back and then some. Yeah. So it's not the weight loss. That's the challenge. That's how they do it. It's the keeping it off. Yeah. And he's setting up the, he's setting the stage for that to not happen. So great job. Our next caller is Jeff from Massachusetts. Jeff, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing? Good, man. Good. Good. Hey. Good. Just want to start off like everybody does by thanking you guys so much. Uh, I actually just discovered you guys about a month ago as I was going into my uh, past competition. 
And uh, it was uh, it was a great great time to uh, to have uh, to discover you guys. So thank you so much for for everything you guys put out there. Uh, even my seven year old son now is uh, has become addicted to you guys as well. As soon as we get in the car, it's Daddy, I want to listen to my mom. Oh, all right, right. Cool. let's do it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> So you, you got the younger generation's attention as well. Awesome. Perfect. Um, so I want to, I actually want to start out with my question and then kind of lead in my background a little bit, because I think it will flow a little better and make more sense. Um, so my question is how to control um, overeating post-competition. So a little bit about my, my background. So I'm, I'm 39 years old. Uh, I'm a, about, uh, about 190 pounds. Uh, I'm a uh, veteran military and a uh, former corrections officer of Bureau of Prisons. Um, and I was medically retired about three years ago, two, sorry, two years ago. Um, and shortly after um, my medical retirement, I had decided to uh, go into, I, I decided I wanted to start competing. Literally just one of those things I did. I rolled over in bed one day and said, I'm going to start doing this. Um Single, uh, single parent veteran, um, and I got got into competing. I've done six competitions in the last two years. Uh, last competition, I got, received my pro card with WBFF, and I want to make my pro debut um, next uh, next August, so in twenty four. Uh, but I would love to be able to do it for once with a clean bulk. Um, I've never had a like a really a, a good clean bulk. Now I've jumped in and out of prep several times. Um, I'm at this point because I was just competed about a month ago. Um, I'm still sort of in reverse diet phase, but we also jumped a lot of steps as well for for good reason. Um, I'm probably I'm a I have it logged to be doing about a little over 2,200 calories a day. Uh, to about 270 to 280 grams of protein. Um, but that is up approximately a thousand calories from where I was even a month ago. So the way our, my prep tends to go is the only thing my coaches truly have me focus on is the number of, uh, the amount, number of grams that I take in of protein per day, not so much the carbs or the fats. That's more, this is your serving size. This is your, uh, these are the number of servings you're allowed to have. And then they'll gradually decrease that throughout the course of my prep until I'm down at my stage weight. Uh, but I'm up approximately 20, about 20 pounds from where I was on stage. Um, but I had, I had also lost almost 10 pounds in my peak weight. Um, now I have this, I have the ongoing issue whenever I come out of prep, um, and go into reverse diet or, or into bulk where I cannot control the overeating to, to save my life. Like it, it's, it, it gets really bad. Um, what's the trigger? Like if I get hunger pains, like I'm truly like stomach is rumbling. I'm actually hungry. I'll embrace that all day long. I love, I'll love that feeling. I'll even convince myself that I'm just compressing fat cells and, uh, and leaning out. Um, but when I start getting the ten like tension stress pains throughout my jaw saying, you need to feed me and you need to feed me now, and I don't care what it is, yet like I, I will go I will go in and just and go crazy. Um the other day we went out and I, I estimated that I took approximately six thousand calories throughout the course of the day. This this is just a couple of days ago. Um and it's I, I really want to know like how do you control that overeating? Uh, when you're coming out of po post competition, when you go from s being so depleted to um, to now you you have you have free range because uh, again I'd love to be able to do this uh, cleanly. So I just wanted to see what you guys think about that. So there's a couple things I hear here, um, and then that hopefully will potentially help you. One, and, and th that a lot of my peers made in in the space when I was competing is this idea that when you go into quote unquote bulk time that you have to eat in this crazy caloric surplus. So uh, I didn't do that. Um, I never let myself get beyond about 4% body fat from almost stage. So I, I'm, I hover around like 9%, 10% body fat at the highest uh, during my quote unquote bulk time. 
And then that way, when it comes time to cut, I'm never more than about six weeks out from ready for stage. And, and a lot of that is this myth that you need to eat a tremendous amount of calories to build muscle. You you need very little additional calories to actually put on, you know, lean tissue. Uh, so there's, there's your, your, your first challenge is, you know, telling yourself, I don't need to eat in this massive bulk to put on a ton of muscle. Cause then you end up putting a ton of body fat on not only that, but you also get in the habit of probably eating a lot of processed foods in order to eat that high calorie. At least this was my experience. Like in order for me to eat 5,000 plus calories, I was having to put a lot of like fast food, junk food, ice cream, things like that into the diet. So I could hit that caloric surplus to bulk. Like I was trying to do. So I quit bulking that way. And, and then what happens is you you have, and you have this type of mindset very similar to mine. When you put your mind to something, I can discipline myself and just say, no, I'm not going to do any of this. So you can you can fight the hunger pains and you can re resist from all those processed foods. But then what happens, you hit the competition, you you, you win, every, and you celebrate. You're like, cool, I, I hit the goal. Now I'm going to allow myself to eat. And then you crave those things that you consistently allow in your diet during the bulk and you go back and then it's hard to control it. So that's another thing that will help that is by not bulking so aggressively with processed foods. Another little hack that I found that this, and this may or may not work for you is I would always book a, uh, like either a Vegas trip or a photo shoot or something like two or three weeks after I finish a show so that I, I knew I had to keep it kind of tight for another two or three weeks, I knew my show was over. So I didn't have to be so restricted that I'm like starving the body and I would, I could eat again in a surplus, but I knew that I'm like, Hey, I got a, a photo shoot or I got a Vegas trip in two or three weeks. I don't want to binge and put 20, 20 pounds on and lose this physique. And so that, that, that other, you know, uh, goal or other thing that I was prepa preparing for made the reverse diet phase a lot easier. Cause I knew I had to kind of keep it in check. And so you just have to treat post show the same attitude that you have going into prep. Like when you go into prep, you have, you're like a machine. You're like, boom, I know what I need to do. I hit these. So just extend it. Just don't say that the, the end of the show day, that's technically not the end of your diet. You need to have the mindset of, yeah, that's the day you present your physique on stage and go after your trophy. But the end of your diet say is until three weeks later and what that look and then you set a goal and plan this and and a good coach by the way should lay that out for you too like so with my clients when i coached clients it was here's what our our prep diet looks like and then here's your diet for the next you know three weeks afterwards coming out of it so you don't have that restrict binge type of mindset those are some things that have helped me yeah. jeff i um Here's what I hear you saying. Okay. I hear you saying a couple different things. And, this, and, and I'm going to right out the gates say that what Adam said would work great for not you, for other people. What you, from <laughs> what, what, what you told me, if you try to do what Adam said, you're going to fail. And here's why. Here's why I think. I hear you say hunger isn't a problem, but this goes beyond hunger. You're talking about <clears throat> tension in the jaw and like signals so loud in your body that it's uncontrollable. Okay. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Okay. I also heard you say you get up to about 22, 2300 calories with 200 and what, 40, 50 grams of protein? 270. 200. Okay. Do you know how many calories you have left for essential fat? 270 grams Very of protein. Little. Almost nothing. Let's, let's do the math here. I'll do that with you. 270 grams of protein is 1,080 calories. That leaves you with not that many calories. I didn't even do that for man. fats or carbohydrates. That's such a good point. Okay, I also see yeah. here that you wrote here that you 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 your last week before the show. This is a guy who's right now 190 pounds, is 1,400 calories. Correct. Okay, so I, at, what Adam said is not going to work because this is not a willpower thing. You can willpower yourself all day long, but you're in a dangerous place. Is where you're at. Okay, your calories are way too low. Uh, going into show way too low and your maintenance is way too low. You're not getting essential fats. What you're not, what you're, what you're feeling is not hunger. What you're feeling is nutrient deficiency signs. Mm. The signs of a nutrient deficiency are uncontrollable to the point where people have been known to peel paint off the wall and eat it in prisons because they desire a nutrient that's in the paint so strongly. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but that's a true story. So there's a difference between I need to eat more because I'm in a calorie deficit and I'm not getting essential fats. If you're not getting essential fats, 
I don't give a shit what kind of discipline you have. You will start to eat your pets at some point. This is how strong those those signals will get. This, Probably- is, such, this is such a good point because I didn't even look at all your numbers. I'm looking up at your numbers, what Sal's talking right now, and he's so on point with your not eating enough fat like that is like one of the biggest mistakes competitors make. Is they just they just simply cut calories. They they focus on the protein and they don't realize they're not getting enough fat in their diet. And that feeling is uncontrollable yeah. when you don't get that. That's their body. Like, uh, listen, we're dying. We can't make enough hormones. We can't uh, protect our nerves. We're not absorbing enough fatty acids or or fat soluble vitamins. So you're probably getting a lot of other signals and signs that you may be not telling us right now, um, or maybe notice that don't think are connected. Things like skin issues, libido issues, mood issues, sleep issues, uh, hot, cold intolerances, uh, lots of other signs. I'm assuming that you're you're enhanced uh, hormonally because I don't know how someone could survive doing this otherwise. Um, and if you aren't, then you're just a willpower machine, and that is not going to last you very long. Uh, I am actually on. I'm on almost no supplements at all. Okay. No so, anabolics. I, I'm actually not even going to start taking creatine until I've until I've actually earned it. Like I'm still building my strength back up to to a maintenance level, so I haven't even started taking creatine yet. I'm not enhanced in any way sh- at all. Not even with hormones. You don't take anabolics. Nothing. You're yeah, a you're a w, you're a pro, and you didn't take any anabolics. Wow. Yeah, you're you're a, that's impressive. You're you're pushing. You're beyond the the limit of um you know what's accept even for bodybuilding. Okay. Because bodybuilding is unhealthy. There's, there's, it's, there's an acceptable unhealthy. A guy your size and what you're saying, you are going in way too low. You're coming out. That's why you're coming out and you can't control it. You need to take some time off competing and rebuild your metabolism. And you need to m- make sure you're getting adequate amounts or essential amounts of essential nutrients, including essential macronutrients. Because I don't care how great your routine is, there's an essential amount of fatty acids, proteins, and nutrients that you need that if you don't get those things are going to start breaking down. Yeah. And and the first sign is uncontrollable. So when if you're the average person and you're telling me, "Oh, I can't control my sweet tooth. I can't control my appetite." Like, okay, there's a lot of people say that, but it's really just craving. When I hear someone like you say that who's a pro, which you know what it feels like to control your appetite, but then you're coming out and you're like, "This is not the same. This is you're not getting es- essential nutrients." So I, you got to rework your diet and get your calories to a healthy place, get your metabolism up, eat those essential nutrients, and maybe don't do a competition for a little while to get to that place. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to keep going to doing this back and forth thing. And each show is going to get more and more challenging yeah. as your body starts to become more resistant to what you're doing, because you're literally telling, you're literally starving your body, not of calories, but of nutrients, very different. Yeah, I want to I want to get you in the forum. So I want to put you in the private forum so I can keep an eye on you and help you through this process. I, I, I I'm I'm actually I'm, I'm in it. I just got in the other day. Okay, good. So I just when you talk in there, if you tag me and 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 Sal and Justin, like we'll be able to see it because it goes fast sometimes. Sometimes we miss comments or things in there. But if you're asking a question about your reverse diet or what you're currently going through, and you tag us. We'll get to see it. Not to mention, we have a bunch of people that have competed in there too. So we have a lot of competitors, uh, some even competitors that I've coached for shows in there. But uh, Sal's right. I, you know, when I, I was just listening to you and I was not looking up at any of your numbers or even factoring that in right now, I thought that was purely just like a, a discipline thing. But he's 100% on, on point. Yeah, you're just, you're too low, bro. Yeah. yeah. At the very least, at the LO, your calories are too low as well. But at the very least, I would take that 270 grams of protein, which is, there isn't a single study that'll show that that's, uh, at, that, that does anything good. It's way excessive. At the very least, I would cut some of that out and, and throw in some more fats and carbs. What did you, what did you hit stage at weight wise? Just curious. My state, my actual stage weight was 167. Okay. Uh, going into peak week, I was around 175, 174. Okay. Yeah. And then you go up when you bulk, how, how high of, how high heavy, how big do you get weight wise? About uh, right about where I'm at now, which is 190, 190. about 190. So I, now I've, bu- I've bounced in, uh, in and out of uh, very quickly. Like I said, I've done six shows in two years. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. So, done, so like I did two shows in November, took a month, took about, Four, 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 five, six weeks off, 
and then jump right back into prep again from January one to the end of April. I mean, I if you do this right, you one will get you healthy, and then you'll you'll make a great splash you'll your crush. Pro, your pro debut. So I think I think it's a good time now. You got your pro card, which I know what that's like to chase that. That's a huge achievement already. So now you should really take a nice at least six months to a year off of even prepping for a show and it's all about getting you healthy and balanced and 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 getting your core your calories up let's start tracking your fats and see where that stuff is at so we can pay attention to that focus on that and then get yourself in a, in a, in a much better place metabolism wise before we get ready yeah. for another I, show I, you know i i bet you even with your binges where they go up to 600 you probably feel amazing the day after like oh i feel great i feel strong i have energy you know, that's a, that's a, a little, a little bloated, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> forget what you look like in the mirror, but you probably feel, uh, you know, you, like you gave your body what it needed. Yeah. You know, you, it, it says up here, you're a graduate, uh, in exercise science and sport, sports nutrition. When you're, when your bodybuilding coaches are telling you what to do, is there any, any part of you that's like, uh, that's wrong. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Well, uh, I, well, so I only just started that, uh, started that, that degree program. I'm only, I'm okay. just starting my class. Uh, last week I started my third class on that. Oh, but yeah, there are definitely days that I'm going. Why? Why am I so low? Like I feel like there should be more nutrients to this yeah. going on. But then I look up in the mirror or down the scale and I go, maybe there's some legitimacy to what they're saying. Yeah. You you know, bodybuilding coaches make livings and pray whether they do it intentionally or not off of people like you, like you have the willpower. Yeah. To, you'll just, you'll, you'll die. You'll do whatever you like. You have, you, you totally on. have that like army mentality. Point me where I need to go. Tell me what I need to do. I'll go fucking over a mountain, crush whoever's in my way mentality. And it's guys like you that can succeed at bodybuilding this way, but it, there is a much healthier and balanced way to do this. Um, and I made a business off of helping people like that, because of so many coaches would fuck up people by just starving their body of nutrients. I'll, I'll tell you what, Jeff, uh, a good percentage of people that have some success in competing is simply because they have the ability to ignore their body signals and they're somewhat more resilient than the average person. Okay. So your body can withstand more damage. That doesn't mean it's good. It just means that you can survive, but you'll actually look better if you do this the right way. I mean, look, Adam got a pro card. Not because he was the most gifted here, that, and the other, but rather because everybody else did it wrong. He just did it right. And he would show up on stage and was healthy. And everybody else was dying to hours of cardio and die, starving themselves and whatever. And he was healthy and he hit the stage and, you know, he, he wiped the floor with a lot of people because of that. So you can do better than you are now with way less of the damage that you're doing. I mean, I, again, I hear the calories and the, I mean, 50% of your calories are coming from protein. Like yeah. that, that doesn't leave a lot of room for other essential nutrients. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll help you through this, Jeff. You get in the forum and you tag me when you're going through and let, let's, let's just walk through your reverse diet and just keep me posted on your journey. Uh, and then, uh, I'll keep an eye on you as we go through this. Yeah. It sounds like a plan. You got it, man. Thanks for calling yeah, in. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, Jeff. All right. Bro, I'm so ashamed that I I was just listening to well, him and never once looked up at his, you know what his, made me his, think that? his numbers. Well, what I made just assumed the dude is he's a pro. I was like, oh, he's got those numbers all yeah, in line. Yeah, pretty enlightening. Uh, yeah. Well, no, what it was is that when he, you, when he said to me, like, oh, I can embrace feeling hunger. And he's a, comp he's a competitor. He's got a card. Right. So I know he knows what hunger feels like. And he yeah, goes, but yeah. this is different. Like, I get like tension pain in my jaw and I'm like, uh, yeah, that's like, different. That's, yeah. I don't, yeah. And then I'm looking at his numbers and I'm hearing, and I'm doing the math in my head. I'm like 270 grams yeah, of protein. Shame but, on me for not like, even doing crazy. that. No, you're right. And that, you know, it's so great though about a, a caller like that. And I, the fact that I totally didn't even look up there and see that is that was actually a very common thing. I know mm -hmm. that's terrible. Is just, just really uh, because they become so focused on the grams of protein and just, and that they just keep shrinking, shrinking, shrinking down. There's no conversation around healthy fats or keeping you in that range. And then you wonder why your body goes through this crazy, this phase where you feel like you're going to die. <laughs> wow. so like, you Bro, did you see how good he looks though for natural? Well, that's because yeah. He's got. He's very. He's resilient. This oh, is, I'm yeah, telling he, you, this, he's a genetic monster. There's a. There's a. There's a self selection bias in yeah. these competitions. Where it's the, not necessarily the the, he the has people. An iron that, mind. It's the people know. that can just withstand. That's the reason why he. I mean, the the he is a genetic monster, and he has unbelievable discipline. That's what he has willed himself to pro. He didn't go there the healthy good way. <laughs> no.
know. Yeah. A lot he of people literally, like that. I know. He, he literally is just willed his ass to that that level. It's incredible, it's man. Crazy. And this is why you hear stories of competitors dying, literally Dude. dying because they have that mindset. They'll ignore every damn signal their body tells it's them. And that story is true about eating the paint chips yep. and in prison. I've and, never heard of that. Because I, I mean, I've heard yeah. of P Pika eating, right? Yep. Like with the... Uh, um, pregnant to uh, ladies and yeah. not looking for nutrients nutrient cravings when you're severely deficient is different than hunger it's literally your body will drive you to do the craziest shit mm. to get nutrients mm -hmm. uh that's such a, different such than a, hunger such a great Crazy. catch by you Crazy. so ashamed that i didn't even, I, didn't <laughs> even dude, I normally that well i'm the numbers guy i normally yeah. look at someone's yeah. macros and but it's like i just assume like oh his macros are all in line he, i'm just going to address the psychological issue that he's challenged because that's common too right it's of very, course very common for competitors oh, the advice you gave generally is it that's yeah. what you do it's, yeah yeah but like when you did the math, and you know, as soon as you said it, I'm like, I'm doing the math in my head. Yeah. While you're, I'm like, oh fuck, he's it's like different when you're nutrient He's like deficient. eating like Just 10 gra ten grams of fat a day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, Damn, dude. that's like 130. That, was, that <laughs> would starve a 130 pound girl. It's like tilapia and broccoli diet. Oh, 100. percent That's what that is. Dude. That's exactly what that is. Wow, wow. Our next caller is Rua from Canada. Hi, Rua. How can we help you? Hi. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Great. Good. I'm such a big fan. I've been listening to you guys now for about two years. Um, I found you guys through Max Lugavier's podcast, actually, and I've been hooked ever since. Nice. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge with everyone. You guys have helped transform the way I look at fitness and train in the gym now. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank we, we, we love Max. Dude. Yeah, we do love him. Yeah, we won't tell him that you only listen to us and not him anymore, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so moving on to my question, I purchased the RGB bundle back in December of 2022 with the goal to do a little bit of body recomp while also maintaining my lower body and glute gains. Um, I finished MAPS Anabolic, loved that, and now I'm on to MAPS Performance. But I'm just wondering if by doing MAPS Performance alone, I'll be able to keep maintaining um, my glute gains, or if I should add in glute focus days, like let's say with the mobility um, training sessions, or like make substitutions with the main maps performance training days. Okay, I'll, I'll answer that one first. Uh, that's good question. It is a good question. So maps performance is a mobility athletic based program, which means you're going to get a lot of hip movement, hip based movements. Okay, so you're going to get a lot of glute work just because that's important for athletes. Now, where somebody may want to add more glute work is if you have an issue connecting to your glutes, if this is a weak body part, in which case then there may you may want to do a little extra work, like trigger sessions or focus session type stuff on those mobility days. But if you don't have an issue connecting to your glutes, if you feel your glutes when you squat and your deadlift, then no, you're not going to, you're not going to, not only are you going to not lose glute gains, but you'll probably get some with math performance. So for basic, where do you fall within that? Is this like an area where you have trouble connecting or do you feel like, no, no, my glutes respond pretty well to those, those exercises? No, they do respond well. Yeah. Okay. Then you're fine. You're going to be totally fine. Yeah. And you'll even notice too, just because you're moving in different planes, your body's reacting different, especially around the hips. Like you're going to get glute med, you're going to get other parts yep. that, you know, will help kind of build and, 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 you know, extend on top of what you've already built. So I think it's, it's just a very different program. So I think that's sort of the alarm that a lot of people have and reserves that they have going in. And, um, you know, it might not look exactly the same initially, but it's going to fill a lot of the gaps when you go back and, and do more aesthetic based training. Yeah. You're probably going to get glute gains with performance to be honest. For with sure. You. So I, I'm going to agree with the guys, but I'm also going to add a little bit that what, what when we wrote these programs, the, the way we kind of advise people is to 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 do them, trust the process, and and run through them as they're written. And then as you come back and let's say let's say you go all the way through RGB bundle and you go back around again, now you can take what you've learned from all three programs and begin to kind of play and modify a little bit custom to yourself. For example, you know you bring up the the glute thing. So maybe when you come back around to anabolic the second time, you've got some. You, you take the trigger sessions and when you do the trigger sessions, you focus on those muscles that you, you care about more. Or maybe the second time you come around performance, you have like a day that's purely just mobility. And then you have a day that is like mobility slash focus sessions like we have in MAPS Aesthetic. So you can start to take like, and, and I encourage people once they go through the programming like that and, and, and follow it the way it is to start to take things 
that they learn from each of them and to kind of modify a little. There's nothing wrong with potentially doing that where you, you go, man, I, man, when I was doing maps aesthetic and I had butt focus days, it really, you know, I got gains on my butt or saw a significant difference than when I just ran performance or anabolic by itself. So that doesn't mean that you can't have one run a performance program and then have one day a mobility day and one day a focus day. That's totally okay. You could do yeah. something like that. R Rua, what kind of gains did you see with anabolic um, in the areas that you're you're talking about? Did you see big changes? Um, yeah. So before anabolic, I was a classic, like loved circuits. Um, my background was competitive swimming and sprint kayaking. So like we did so much cardio and I just got used to like always training mm -hmm. super hard. Mm -hmm. So doing anabolic like forced me to slow down and I just got way more definition in like my arms and my back. Um, so it was kind of aesthetic driven, but now I just feel like cool. really strong again. All right. Very cool. You said there's a second part to your, your question. Yeah. So, um, I'm a travel nurse, so I do the beloved shift work. And so I'm just wondering how I should modify my training, um, around night shifts. I never train between night shifts or the first day coming off after listening to you guys, but I'm just wondering how I should modify, like maybe going into my first night shift or just what, what? that like in general. Actually, what you're doing is perfect. Mm -hmm. What you just said was perfect where you're, yeah, where you're taking like an extra day off after or not in between. That's ideal right there. So in other words, maybe your program would normally be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but depending on your schedule, it might be Monday, Thursday, Sunday, or Monday, Friday, Monday. That's what you're doing is perfect. And then gauge your, uh, your readiness by strength, by sleep, by energy. If those start to go down, then reduce the intensity first. And then second would be reduce the volume. And then third would be reduce the frequency in, okay. that, in that order. I also see in your other, in your comment, in your question up that you wrote that you also do mid distance running. How, how what do you mean by mid distance? What is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do anywhere from like four kilometers to like max eight. Um, and I just love running. Like it's coming from sports. So I just kind of do that for my mental health, but okay. I don't like train super hard. That's like under 30 minutes of running. Yeah. Okay. So I got, I, I'll give you something. How often do you do that? By the way, how many days a week would you do that? Um, in the summer, cause it's nice more so. So like two times a week, but like my weight training is priority. Right okay. Now. I'll tell you what, if you're going to do running and you're doing two, let's say two sessions and you're talking about glute gains, if you switch out one of those running days, mid distance for sprints, you'll probably see more gains in your glutes. So instead of doing like a, you know, four kilometer run, which is, what is that? Two miles, something like that. I don't know. Doug, do the math here. We, we don't, we don't, we use the Imperial system or here, sled so. drives. Uh, I would go, yeah, mm. I would do drive the sled for short distance or sprints. I would do like sets of 50 yard dashes where you rest in between. So you're treating it like strength training. So it's like as fast as you can, 50 yards, rest five, six minutes, and then do it again and for the same total time that you would do your, your, your run for. So that's about two and a half miles. Yeah. So that, that probably takes you, you know, 25, 30 minutes. I would right. do set sets of sprints, rest in between, treat it like strength training that those sprints will act like strength training, but you'll get the running as well. And th you'll see some gains probably in the glutes. Mm -hmm. I, so I was doing sprint training before. And then before I purchased the RGB bundle, I like, um, asked someone with mind pump, um, like what package I should purchase. And she said that, and then she said to like slow down or not do the hit. Cause I was doing hits. I was doing sprints, but that like the mid distance running was okay to do. So okay. kind of there's a difference between hit and what I said. Oh, okay. so, so hit you're you're resting just enough to go for it again. And you're trying to keep that calorie burn. What I'm saying is treat the sprints like strength training. So longer I warm up. Periods. Yeah, long, I warm long up. Long like, rest periods, like a minute, two minutes between. Longer, like yeah. I, like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fully I'm, recovered. Yeah, I'm doing my mobility. I'm ready for a sprint. Maybe I jog a little bit, get everything warmed up. Then I run as fast as I can for 50 yards, and then I rest as long as I need so yeah. that the next one can be max effort again. Okay? okay, just like you do with squats or deadlifts. So literally, it's like how fast can I be with 50 yards each time? Not how many can I squeeze in, you know, a 20 minute period or something like that. So it's different than hit. It's you're treating it like strength training.
Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, a hill would be awesome too, and the It'll sled be would be awesome. I mean, too. turf is ideal just to maintain and preserve your joints. But yeah, I think uh, that's solid advice. Like I, uh, even then, just like running sprints, you're going to see quite a substantial amount of definition and whatnot happening, uh, just because you're activating those fast twitch muscles. Yes. Like, so you you may actually see some gains in your legs overall. It, it's like strength training. And then when you finish RGB, I think uh, Map Strong will be a great program oh, for you. Or Symmetry. Yeah. Stronger. Do you have either one of those? I do not, no. All right. Which one do you want? Who do you like better, Sal or Adam? <laughs> Stupid, dude. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You can't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, which one do you, which one do you want? Dog's always the best answer. We'll send you one. We'll send you Stronger Symmetry. Which, which one do you want to do after RGB? Probably Strong. You got I'd it. Yeah, she yeah. likes yeah. Adam more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> to be fair, fair enough. I didn't know who did who. Yeah. Just <laughs> it's, okay. that's all right. it's okay. That's that's I'm gonna rub it in all day today. <laughs> that's the third person in eight years now that likes Adam. <laughs> so we'll write that down. No, I'm just kidding. But thank, thanks for calling in and yeah, you're gonna love you're gonna love Map Strong when you're ready. Quality, not quantity. So. Thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs> thanks for calling in. You got it. All right. Of course. All right, take care, guys. Are you guys like me when people talk in kilometers and meters and shit? <laughs> I'm like, like yeah, like two like, point two and some other numbers. Yeah, you know like that meme where, right where the girl's head. looking confused. There's all these equations in her head. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I weigh forty stones or whatever. You know, people. Oh crap! What well, that's going to give you stones and things oh, like that. Give yeah. me kilometers of at least yeah. and kilograms. I still have to, to yeah. those, but no, manually she, write it out. She's killing it. Your advice was on point, Adam. It's like yeah. uh, it's great to modify after you follow the program as it's written, because yeah. then you really know how to modify. Otherwise, it tends to be like a. Just add more stuff where I think I need to. And I think I just wanted to make that point to the audience so people don't think that we we really believe that like, oh, these programs were written perfect and they're written perfect for everybody. It's no. like, no, like we let just trust the process that like it te treat it like an education. You'll learn, process. Yes. yes. And then once you learn about your body and how all the you programs can individualize work, it. Further, yeah, then you can yeah. start to customize it a little bit for your specific you know totally. needs and goals. I'm glad she asked the question about performance because it is a very glute heavy program. Anything mm -hmm. revolving around athletics is going to be glute heavy. That's just yeah. the bottom line. So, oh, yeah. Our next caller is Ryan from Kentucky. Ryan, what's happening? How can we help you? Uh, sorry, I'm pretty nervous. This is kind of surreal. Um, Don't worry, so Justin just, is too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a, my third phase of anabolic advanced. Uh, I got it right after you guys dropped it. Um, going through it. But my main question, I guess, is I'm, I'm coming up on a mastectomy in June right after my... Uh, final deload week uh and they told me not to even look at the gym for at least two weeks uh so i'm wondering what you guys have uh for me to kind of go through those two weeks or what i can do to mitigate any losses uh and then kind of where to go from there i didn't realize they well, make you take that much time off for yeah, a second yeah. that's why i'm not getting one <laughs> <laughs> come on man you're gonna keep, sign up with I me i keep having kids too uh, you know uh it's funny he said deload to the vasectomy yeah, wow. yeah. deloading yeah all right, so look, here's the deal. Um, you're not going to lose anything. Two weeks is not going to make yeah, you lose yeah. anything. Um, you could do very light strength training, like 30% full range of motion, get a little pump. You could do mobility work. Um, you could do stretching. You could yeah. do walking. But light, you're not going to bands training. Yeah, band. You're not going to lose any. You're not going to lose any gains. I mean, you might come back and get okay. sore. You'll get sore yeah. with your first few workouts, but you're not going to lose any gains. So okay. one thing you could do is leading into that is really push yourself hard so that you get a little more recovery time. Yeah. So that's sometimes right. what I would do if I'm going on a vacation, let's say a 10 day vacation the week before I tend to push it harder than I normally do so that I have that extended recovery with the time off type of deal. But your okay. two weeks is nothing. You're totally fine. By the way, how was your experience so far with anabolic advanced? Uh, I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm bigger. I'm stronger than I'm, I've ever been. Uh, I've only been back into serious fitness for uh, going, coming up on a year in June. Um, but uh, even my younger days, I, I was in the Marine Corps and lifted a little bit, but uh, nothing like I've got from from your program. Awesome. Can how we, can how many kids you have, by the way, Ryan? Why are you getting a vasectomy? What's going on? <laughs> I have four kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I feel you, bro. It's time, dude. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. Yeah. You don't even have time to shave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah. what, what, about, um, what about the new program? For oh... Him? That's we can't talk about. Yes, that. no, it's live by then. This goes Ryan, we're now. gonna send you. We're gonna send you a surprise program. Yeah, it's a surprise. Uh -huh. We can't, we can't talk awesome. about it's a it. New one. We can't talk about it because we haven't released it yet. But we're gonna send it to you. Yeah. Okay. We'll slide awesome. it in your awesome. DMs. It's called. It's, uh, it's called maps vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, real quick, do I have time for one more question? Of course. Yeah. Um. 
how how do you suggest how should I have been going uh through my progression through anabolic advance as far as weight? Should like should my weight for volume have been the same that I'm using on uh same counterparts for for failure since no. since intensity a little bit in the tank on volume and then no failure so up, up a little bit and then go into failure. No, so um, you're you're gonna so okay. So for people people who don't have that program, um, there's more to the program than this. But what he's asking about is in the phases you alternate between training with more volume to training with less volume but higher intensity. So you have weeks where you go to failure, much less volume, and then weeks where you don't go to failure, uh, where there's higher volume. So here's the deal: um, you're gonna probably use less weight on the volume days. And really, it's about getting a great pump. That's it. That's right. what you're trying to get on the on the volume weeks. Is trying to get a great pump. On the failure okay. weeks, you're trying to, with perfect form, get stronger each week with perfect form. Now, at some point, this happened to me. The strength guy, the strength got so high that I had to slow the reps down to go to failure versus adding weight because it got to the point where the risk versus reward ratio wasn't that great. Like, there's there's only so much weight I want to add to a lift before uh, my form's off a little bit. It's probably going to hurt. So at that okay. case, then you'd slow your reps down. But if you're not at that point yet, then it's really about getting as strong as possible with perfect form, going to failure, and then again, get a good pump on the volume weeks. That's really what you're aiming for. Okay. That's that's what I've been doing. So awesome. That's and that's why you're crushing. All right, man. Appreciate it. You got it, Ryan. Thanks, and uh, hope you enjoy the new program. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. You got All it, right. brother. Rest those huevos. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Maps <laughs> shooting blanks. I uh, uh, damn, dude. Two weeks. I didn't know that. I, I thought, didn't know that either. I thought you got back within a few days. I thought it was like an in and out process. It is. Dude. But they I had don't it want scheduled and just didn't uh, follow through. Yeah, yeah well, it's like that's one of those uh, things. I have yeah. I haven't scheduled one, but I need, <laughs> I need to because yeah. I don't want any more kids. Yes, you do. Yeah, you for sure. To. You guys yes, are yeah, you guys yeah. are encouraging. We'll me drive too. you there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys are. Let's try to do a four week. You know. God damn. Got a little donut pillow. But yeah, for people for people listening, like if you're consistent and you even if you take two weeks completely off, you're not going to lose any gains at all. It's two weeks off. No. It's and, after like four weeks that you start to see that. And what if you just did upper body stuff? It's the, I think you're fine. His doctor said to, you know how it is with the, I know they're going to, we can't go. Gonna, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know what happened? It's the, it's the uh, exertion mm -hmm. that they don't want. Like, uh, oh, you know, you're doing the exertion. Oh, wow. You could create too much pressure on where they did the incision. Yeah. Your penis yeah. explode. Blow, blow a line in there somewhere. <laughs> don't want your penis blow explode. Out, <laughs> blow out your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it's that possible? Scared death Doug, is that possible? Can you blow it out? I don't fluid? believe so. Uh, but... never, well, if Doug's never blown it out, then uh, you're good. Uh, <laughs> All right, look, if you like Mind Pump and you like the MAPS programs, check this out. We have a new subscription model where you can actually follow some of the workouts and exercises for like $5 a month. That's it. And it's updated every single week. It's on Instagram. Mind Pump Media. Get workouts every single week for less than $5 a month. Go check it out. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 